Okay, I believe we are live. I'll just go Ooh. ahead and check on that little uh, YouTube channel that we got. Oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Oh, it's showing. Oh, it is. All right. Hello, hello, first. Hannah Karen. Welcome first. to being first. Uh, Congrats. <laughs> Technically, gotta, we were here first, but okay. Yeah, yeah. I got to pull uh, link. We were here. Beacha. Where is my link, Streamlabs? You don't need a link from Streamlabs. You can just copy the link from where it is on YouTube. And I know, but it would be so much nicer if I just could copy paste directly on the thing I was already had open. Uh, <laughs> I didn't even realize they oh, gave whoa. you a link. Oh, on my Streamlabs. goodness. There's so many people. Oh, sweet baby Jesus. Four people people oh never mind <laughs> hello 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 it's everyone. not even joke it's joke over it's almost <laughs> as many as us uh, uh i just i i don't know for some reason i, I got it in my head that no one was gonna come because i saw some people were saying like <laughs> oh i'm working i'm sleep like online people were like this is the middle yeah. of the night for me i'm working whatever i have school no, i have we're, games we're and i was like man i guess no one's gonna come it's gonna be awkward no nope, yeah not the case not at all we're gonna be hanging here in just a second um Welcome to the Q and A live stream. Uh, oh boy, that's I wasn't hitting copy on. I have two keyboards in front of me, and I keep hitting buttons on the wrong keyboard. But we're we're powering through. Have you considered going down to one keyboard? All right, no, are never. any of us firing on all cylinders today? I'm doing great. <laughs> okay, yeah, great. Give us me like a team. minute. Like I'll, I'll be doing here. fantastic. I have I have one keyboard, but it doesn't have any keys right now, so I'm having a time. <laughs> great. What? What? I'm cleaning it. Oh. I'm cleaning it. Uh, yeah. So it will finally be silent. Uh. <laughs> so welcome to the season one, not season one, campaign one. Oh boy. Season one. Why is it called season one wrap up? Oh no. <laughs> oh, because this is the first. <laughs> uh. All right. We'll ignore the That's, fact that I completely fine. mistitled that. Um... Everyone point and laugh. Let's not. Let's be nice to Jeez. nice to Sophia while she fixes this real quick. It's right in if the thumbnail. Could clip that audio and just tweet oh, it. That would be. I would super appreciate that. It's I would love to see that go one hundred percent viral. People who have no idea who any of us are know that someone hey, put look, a YouTube video. It's fixed Re now. Okay? Refresh it. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Refresh there it. There we right. go. It's, it's fixed. No, I shed refresh it. Uno. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I can't express how much I was hoping for a typo in there. I'm going to sit I'm going to sit in this nice season 1 wrap up to the stars video and I won't reload it. How about Okay, that? well, everyone <laughs> no, welcome to the history. campaign 1 wrap up Q&A. We're going to be here for the next like 2 hours answering questions about the campaign. Um we we just finished the Paraspora campaign. Thank you so much to everyone who listened. If for some reason you have not finished that campaign, it might be a good time to pause this live stream, finish the campaign, and then listen to the VOD <laughs> afterwards because I there's going to be spoilers for things. I We, we got to get that out of the way. Top of the head. Top of the head. Top of the podcast. Oh, I just signed a lease on a new apartment, so I'm a little out of, <laughs> out of it. Hey. Um, oh, okay. Fancy, fancy. Congrats. Uh, thank you. I was at PAX East, so I'm sleepy. Yes. I was but... also at PAX East. <laughs> but we are going to be taking I just had a last work back. <laughs> taking questions from the email and from the chat uh please ask your question once uh we promise we'll be scrolling back through old stuff as they happen i know that there are a lot of a lot of you here which is so incredibly cool um and if for any reason your question is not answered please feel free to email us afterwards and we will do our best to get to everyone's various emails um but without further ado the whole cast is here i think it's best if we just uh jump into some questions so this yeah, I see a one. lot of season one wrap up questions. Do you think? Yay. Of, do you, season one wrap up question. Do you think anyone other than Wally will ever multi class? Oh, gee, I don't know. <laughs> Impossible to tell. Uh, well, this question comes from the email. We'll kick it off from there. From uh, Anthony Alighieri. I'm so sorry if I said that wrong. Uh, Dear Rolling with Difficulty Table, I am, of course, sad that the campaign is over, but it's mixed with relief that I can now finish my Virla cosplay without worrying about the design changing every season because someone got another power up. <laughs> Uh, it's a relief huh? for us as well. <laughs> um, a question for Noir that I'm sure everyone is asking. Uh, if the Devil's Bargain weren't in the picture and Virla got the killing blow on Dexter, then he wouldn't have hesitated. But what if he got the killing blow in this timeline? So in the instance uh, where he had made the bargain with uh, Kinzio. Oh, 
Would his plans yeah. for Dexter, if Kinzero forced Virla to spare him, involve reluctant mercy, or would he go full fate worse than death on the guy? Um, what yeah. Happened? So. Oh yeah, we talked about what this was actually. Plan? We did. We did end up talking yeah. about this. This was. Um, I'm. I'm trying to pull it up now. I'm trying to find. The, the monologue that I wrote in case <laughs> Virla would have had to. <laughs> yes, respect to someone who writes the script out beforehand. Uh, it's not the <laughs> yeah, first well, time you've done it, but I'm always impressed. Because uh, I do that yeah, all the time, you know. So, so Virla was very aware of the um, the implications of of the contract. Uh, the 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 week leading up to episode ten, we were debating in very excruciating detail the line. I went back and I and I transcribed what exactly the terms <laughs> of the contract were back in episode three, uh, oh, season three, so episode stressful. two. And, like, the thing that I personally got super hung up on was Austin's use of the word opportunity. If you have the opportunity to kill someone. And I'm like, well, what does that mean? Does that mean that, like, any combat I have the opportunity to kill someone? It's just not until, like, it, 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 and it, I, I have to, like, do I have the opportunity to kill someone if, if, if Voss is going to deal the killing blow and I have to stop him or something like that? Like, does that count? And so we were debating it right up until the very end. But... In the event that Virla did have to, pro in the event that the pro uh, the contract did proc, Virla would keep him alive. Virla, <laughs> this is gonna get a little dark. I apologize. Virla would cut off and cauterize all of his limbs and throw him in the astral sea. Jesus. He would keep. We him already knew this. He would I don't be kept know. alive. <laughs> he would be kept alive, and this. Uh, and and the, and and I wrote a little thing, which here I'll read out loud for the sake of things. I don't know if I'll fully act it because again I'm tired. But oh boy. Uh, so imagine that, that if this had gone through, Dexter's sort of just floating in the astral seat now. Uh, for the record, I'd rather see you dead. But the devil on my shoulder seems to be the one being in all the planescape who gives a damn about you. And even then, his interest in you only extends as far as he needs in order to spite me. I'm gonna. And then I produce the beetle for my satchel and I place it on my shoulder. <laughs> so bear witness, devil, to the ten thousand and first secret you'll keep, and see that I honored our agreement to the letter. Dexter, sunderer to the paraspora, betrayer of the mission, catalyst to both its success and its failure. Given the opportunity to kill you, I instead sentence you to a life where you will not tire, you will not hunger, you will not age. I sentence you to life under the stars of the Astral Sea to look forever upon the same sight that Emerson saw, his final view before he died. And I sentence you the denial of your mission. For as long as you live, you will do so with the knowledge that the completion of your mission was right in front of you, but just out of reach. And here at the edge of the planescape, that's where it will remain, right in front of you and just out of reach. I've done everything I can to ensure that you stay right here, never to return but if by some monumental effort you do return like the little cockroach you are know that i will be ready but if you know what's good for you if there truly is any remorse left in that shriveled soul of yours you'll stop scurrying away for once and just accept your fate goodbye dexter i am eager for you to become just another forgotten memory to me yeah, I don't know if I'm going to fully act this one. You know, I'm a little bit tired today. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, Dexter. <laughs> <laughs> Prepare to suffer yeah. 1,000 torments. Anyway, what are you guys up to? Yeah, so that's what that's that's the timeline that could have been. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Austin. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's I okay, mean, guys. You guys don't know yeah. if he had gotten if he had gotten the, the ones. That That's the thing. This is this is all what, uh, yeah. what Kinzira would have done if that if that yeah. situation had come up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is all operating under the assumption that Virla's assumption of the contract is correct. We don't know. We don't actually know what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. I Impossible. bet money Dexter would have come back with Darth Maul style robot spider legs. <laughs> He's like a cockroach. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I, I I wrote I wrote this before the final battle, and I I appreciated the, the Dexter calling his cockroaches as well. There's a little <laughs> hey, hey, I see you, yeah. you see me. I do think anyway, and I know that Dexter is our big bad recurring villain, but in a way, Indelian is the one who most uh, embodied the "How many times must we teach you this lesson, old man?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but we'll take more questions. I was trying to make him bad as I tried to live up to his first 
round of combat every time i was like this guy is a nasty piece of work and every time i go this is this is it he's coming back as a monster uh and then you guys clowned him <laughs> clowned on him and got a dinosaur as a friend uh, i don't as a think <laughs> i don't think he ever lost that intimidation that you instilled in us uh in that first combat because like yeah, we clowned on him, but I don't know. Me personally, I was I was instilled with fear every time, thinking that like you were rolling well and we're doing well, but wrong one wrong move and Virla's gonna get another sword in his chest. Yeah, but it all turned out well in the end. Uh, we'll take another question. This one's from chat. Uh, Yuki Arashi. Now that it's over, is there a spot where you'd want to go back to make a different decision just to see what happened? Ooh, I wish I killed Dexter. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm, this is a good question. Oh. Huh. I'm a pretty big proponent of like, even if you make a bad decision, you should commit to it. So generally, I try yeah. not to think about like uh, really? what, what I would I had do no different. Idea. Uh, yeah, but um, I there's a, there was a part of me that really expected uh, in when we we immediately left our our first big fight with the with the elder brain where we we uh, planes plane shifted Kiana back where I was like, now Danny and Kiana are gonna have a a big uh fight because Kiana is very emotional and Danny is like, why do you guys keep making me make these decisions? Fine, I'll be captain. But uh, I, I, I don't know that I would want that to happen, but I do think it would have been interesting to go straight from um, such a high stakes moment into a character conversation. But I don't know that I'm willing to sacrifice the, the sweet conversations between like Iona and Kiani, Iona, Ioni and Kiani, and Virla and Kiani. Almost. Oh my god. Almost. <laughs> Let's try saying All right, Ioni screw cancel and... everyone. Get out. Sorry. <laughs> it's done. We'll pick up next week. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I do wish that in season yeah. one I had been more specific about where the trapdoors on the ship were. Where I think at some point I drew a map, but I immediately lost it, and I, it would have been very fun to have like that precise information in a couple combats. Hmm. I already said mine. It's up to you guys True. now. <laughs> I mean, if the fight with Dexter in the final episode hadn't worked out as well as it had, it would have been. I don't think I should have let Virla have that decision. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, oh, do you want to know your secret origins, or do you want to let famously stable wizard Virla make this decision? <laughs> yeah, it would be a fate he deserved. But it all worked out. It it worked out fine. We, we were briefly in Schrodinger's dubious ending, but then it worked out great. Um... Yeah, Wally Noir. No real regrets on my end. Uh... The dice well, it's not a guy who plays who does regret D&D. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. well, it doesn't pass up on a chance to push the red button, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, legitimately, I, I I wish I had the opportunity to kill Dexter. I would have been. Mm -hmm. It would have been cool seeing whatever outcome play out play mm -hmm. out. Um. I guess maybe the only other one was uh, the alternate timeline, in which Virla went first uh, in that final encounter and actually did break the staff, <laughs> which. Like one hundred percent would put him at a, at a mechanical disadvantage. That would have been so suboptimal <laughs> that even even uh, in hindsight, like after saying that I was going to do it at the end of episode nine, I was like, you know, I do a lot of things for the sake of role playing that aren't <laughs> mechanically optimal. But this is this is this is this is kind of going too far in the in the direction. So. A little bit of inside baseball. We were all so in the sauce after that that, like, it took us <laughs> half an hour to remember that you had the upgrade that meant you would be fine with one hit point. Yes. Like, yeah. We were like, okay, so Virla's gonna fucking knock himself out of the fight in round one. Do we stand a chance? And then it's like, oh wait, wait, no, no, no. <laughs> and it's it was fun watching the discussion the week between episodes nine and episode yeah. ten because it was basically just a rehash of everything that we yeah. were saying right down to like the a couple of days later people were like oh shit virla has the troll essence mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah it is indeed yeah. uh, a, a, oh boy it's so spooky um we got one other question from chat this one comes from sam's the amazingness uh, question for all the players: How do you feel about where your characters are at the end of the campaign? Is there anything you wish they had done before now? Uh, How do you guys feel about where your characters ended? Uh, who wants to go first? Uh, I guess I'll start um, yeah. because I have two of them. <laughs> oh yeah, but I don't. I don't usually plan for an ending 
for my characters, nine times out of ten, I'm just like, okay, at some point, they might not even get an ending because they'll unceremoniously die to some unfortunate dice roll. That being said, though, I am really glad with how Finbar uh, got a chance to actually retire um, and just slowly start to leave it all behind. Um, it's not an ending I could have imagined for an adventurer. Uh, it's a one that is very rare to happen, um, and I'm, I'm happy for my boy. Um, and as for Voss, I, I I don't know if it's more of an ending for him, but it's more of a I guess a, a a new beginning in in his life, and it started off with such a very intense um, experience that uh, at least for him, he's he's happy that okay, great, I, I did a really big thing. I have a lot of big opportunities coming up for me. Uh, and he's 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 actually has he has things to look forward to, and I'm and, and I'm happy for him. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I I feel like I have a pretty easy answer to this. So to jump in, like, Danny ended it about as good a place as she possibly could have. I don't know that I had a set um, way for her to end the campaign in mind back in season one. Uh, I I kind of chose to play Danny because she was a character who just existed to interact with whatever was thrown at her she didn't really have a big motivation she just had an interesting way of uh interacting with the world and becoming captain and getting to the adventures continue uh with a lot more agency i think is a really nice arc for her to have finished on i don't know that i have i don't really have any regrets from from this campaign for, for danny i think that uh it ended about as good as it could have for her yeah i mean i i think that none of us came to the table with like this is how i want my story to end you know like that it's such an improvised storytelling medium that like you you cannot possibly predict all the decisions that will happen and all mm -hmm. the things that will make sense um uh, honestly in my experience the more pre-planning you come into a campaign with the more frustrated you're gonna be uh yeah. and the harder time you'll have rolling with the punches or like like if you have an arc in mind you're gonna be trying to figure out a way to wrestle whatever happens into that arc rather than just kind of going with the flow and letting it take you in weird directions um like Kiana multiclassing into Barbarian was not something I planned until I was like, I think this would be a good little bit of uh, Ludo narrative synergy or whatever. Anyway, uh, I'm very happy with how the campaign ended because my one thing was like, I need the adventure to continue for Kiana. And it was like, dope, can do. The adventure continues. <laughs> your, your, your quest is never over. It's like, yes, good. Exactly what I wanted. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Nice. Noir? Um, I'm really happy with where Virla ended up. Like, I, I, I kind of anticipated that like he would continue doing his duties as a magister, but I got the uh, uh, additional bonus of him being able to recover all of his memories, and mm -hmm. like that was a nice little like closed loop moment, I suppose. Throughout the entire campaign, I I was never really too concerned with regaining Virla's memories, mm -hmm. and it wasn't really until getting the old crew back and seeing like there is kind of a virla shaped hole where the crew is that this virla currently can't really fill that uh kind of got virla thinking on old memories or whatever and so that's why one that's kind of partially the reason why he was so ready to he, he to, to to regain his memories basically just cuz like he wanted to experience everything that he could with his crew his old crew as well from beginning to end um but like, yeah, like he has his friends. He has as many friends as he could have tried to save and got. And he's the magister now. And he's in a pretty decent place with Maxim. And yeah. <laughs> Just to tack this on, Virla Maxim, this is canon. This is a... <laughs> I, the, the trajectory is definitely there. I, I would I would say like I, I'm not I'm serious when I'm saying that Virla kind of has to do some self healing first, but <laughs> in the in the event that that happens, I can definitely see Virla developing an attraction to Maxim. Awesome. Whether Maxim develops an attraction to Virla is another <laughs> matter entirely. Uh, well, another cool. question here from chat from uh, Alicia Salacious: Who were everyone's backup characters? Did you all have one ready, and did we get to meet them? Um, we did meet my backup character. Uh, it was gonna be Mandy the sort of like mercenary working with the heap sometimes and uh yeah they're they were a big old asshole we didn't hang out with them very often but if anything had permanently happened to danny that would have been that would have been my go-to oh boy uh did any of us have backup characters because i didn't prepare <laughs> one um, my backup. oh yeah go not particularly uh i 
I I have a list of characters that I want to play at some point that I'll, that I could have easily slotted into the char- into the campaign. I, I will say though, the alternative for Voss instead of playing a, a bard sorcerer multi class, I was looking at playing uh, some sort of forge cleric and um, mm-hmm. another multi class, uh, a, a gif, uh, which would have been fun to slot into the party. Um, G-I-F-F and GIFF GIF. Yes, GIFF. Mm-hmm. But uh, apparently uh Austin doesn't particularly like the the Hippo Boys, so I ended up I running with like Voss anyways. Boys, that's true. <laughs> um and I don't then know the... that they're so weird. Yeah. Um and then the other thing is technically Fin Finbar's list of X's are all previous character sheets um that I have. They're they're part of my binder of characters that I want to play at some point. So Wow. Yeah. 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 They they all have fleshed out backstories and everything. So Amazing. very early on, we had the conversation of uh, if any of the player characters die, like do we? Because re- we when we started the first and second seasons, you know, no one really had revivify, or it would have been a big deal to get a cleric to revive somebody. So we had the conversation of like, what do we do if a character dies? Uh, and some of us landed on backup characters, but we also had the idea of do a whole episode adventure to like go into hell and like bring Danny back or like go do a specific adventure to get bring a character back and I'm a little disappointed we never got to execute that but I am very happy that we all survived so it's sort of a it's a (laughs) win-win yeah I was in camp don't let me stay dead I like Kiana too much (laughs) Uh, but we did play a one-off just a one-shot home game where I sort of like in the 30 minutes before we played I was like fuck I need a character that's right and and threw together this little like uh, like Tiefling Paladin of Bahamut, who I legitimately quite like. Uh, just a just a fun little himbo who accidentally just one more thinged his way into the greater planescape out of the material plane. And if Kiana died, I probably would have just brought him in. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, uh, I will if... say, uh, Sophia, chat is saying you're quiet. Uh, I can I know, physically true? not raise my gain any louder. I'm just going to endeavor to talk louder, but uh, unfortunately, because of the way that um, my inputs in Streamlabs work, everyone on des- Discord can be edited to be louder, and mine's at the maximum already. So uh, I will right. I will endeavor to talk loudly for you, chat, but I cannot promise anything more than that at this time. Um, yeah, we'll take uh, another question from chat here from Logan Van Hofwegen. Question for Austin, was the fungus supposed to have a bigger role in the plot, or did it end up the way you wanted it to? Tell us about those mushrooms. Oh, great question. Uh, yes to both. Uh, so so part of the meta-narrative of the setting, it, so it ended up exactly how I wanted it to. I didn't want that to be like, you know, the campaign-defining bad guy. I thought it was a good season-defining bad guy, and then it got to have one more hurrah at Finbar's wedding, right? Hmm. But... Hmm. Uh, the part of the like one of the things that's going on in the setting is because of previous stuff that has happened with other adventuring parties. Zuktmoy Zuc- is making a play at the Planescape. Basically, she's in the middle of ramping up, and these plots are there's plots within plots within plots that are happening. And that was just one thing that was going on. Uh, and she has presence other places that is she's trying to make plans happen. So. Yes, it ended where I wanted it to for the show, and also there is more mushroom stuff going on. So uh, you know, maybe we'll see more of more of Zuktamoy in the future. But yeah, uh, Dweebelex is fully dead. He got uh, he'll come back after a long time, but he got killed in his lair, so he's gone mm-hmm. for a long ass time. Uh, and he shared a plane with her, so like now she has all this space, and she's she's not fighting a war on her own turf anymore. And a bunch of other demon lords have been recently brought low. So she is kind of like climbing her way up the ladder, so to speak. Excellent. Uh, well, we will take. I uh, sorry, just gonna mute my Discord notifications. I hear you, chat. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> this bad. one we got a little goss going on in the side channel. Uh, this one comes from our email uh, from that one motherfucker on Discord. Uh, Sophia, how do you feel about the relationship between Danny and Otto? You, or rather, Danny, were often the only one to come to his defense throughout the campaign. Additionally, how do you feel about Danny and Davion? Will those sparks ever ignite into something more? Uh, the Danny and Davion one, I feel like I can answer very quickly. Um, I think it's very funny if they have like a Vegas one weekend wedding and then get divorced immediately afterwards and just do this several times throughout the rest of history. But uh, I will allow the fans to decide how um, 
deep they want that bond to go in their head cannons beyond i th- i think at the end of the campaign at the very least they were settling into some sort of flirtatious uh frenemies situation <laughs> um but as for danny and otto uh yeah you know i think danny and otto ended up being a much more complicated and interesting relationship than i thought they were going to be uh in my mind at the start of the campaign he was just sort of a a bad boss you know not like really a villain but just sort of this uh kind of slimy guy we could get jobs from sometimes and over the course of the campaign he became much more antagonistic as he sort of came into conflict with the crew's home more frequently which did create a really interesting relationship um for danny's part like more than i think any other character danny had not the most tragic backstory, but just, like, the most realistically awful. Like, she was mm. a, a kid in extreme poverty living on the streets with no family and no support system. And she just has this as her backdrop for what life is normally like. And The Heap, by comparison, was a really great place to suddenly find herself living. Like, maybe she wasn't making a ton of money, but she had a roof over her head and a stable job and now some sort of a support system. And it was really wonderful to see that she was able to grow beyond that over the course of the campaign but I do think that that context really flavored her relationship with Otto in a way that it did not for everyone else because Mm -hmm. otherwise he's just a bad boss uh he's just a scummy guy who kept saying no you can't have your house that flies uh I own it and so I, I I understand why Danny was the only one who ever came to his aid and I think at the end of the campaign like with her level of separation, her new control over the Paraspora, as much as Otto may still be an asshole, I think that there is a kind of care there that Danny has for him that's never really gone away. Um, He was a support system at a a difficult time in her life, and it's great that she has a much better support system now in the form of the crew, Um, but it's it's something that I, I, I think always sort of underlied uh, their interactions was this past history Hmm. Hmm. all right another question from the chat here from candy bar uh which plane do you or your characters wish you'd gotten to spend more time in arborea (laughs) yeah yeah. well well, we're we're, we're going there like uh, there are some people who are asking questions they're like oh tell us about all the wrong way now that the thing's done we we will revisit these characters and you know Mm -hmm. it's not in between this season and the next one the next season is obviously a different campaign but we will revisit these characters in a one shot and i can almost guarantee you arborea is the place we'll be going to tie up that loose end so yes. if you're curious, Arborea is coming. If you're curious about Ola Runway, more information is coming. Some things will remain secret for now. But uh, so just to speak to that really quickly. Yeah, no, we definitely... We're, we're closing the main story of these characters, but surely they will return. Um, also, just want to shout out that whoever in chat just said that they, when I talk, I remind them of Emily Axford. That's the highest compliment I've ever been paid. And we do own the <laughs> same sweater from Mod Cloth circa 2016. So in this way, we are linked... Um, but we will jump to other questions here. Uh, oh, well, we didn't really answer that question at all. I just no, wanted no, to. not really. <laughs> yeah, uh, I just wanted to because I know no. people were going to be disappointed about Arboria. I wanted to, I wanted to step yeah. on the yes. flames before they grew. No, no, sorry no, to cut right. you off there. I got right. ahead of myself. I got too excited about being compared to Emily X. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyone else? Planes? I got spoiled. Uh, we've been to the Beastlands multiple times. My favorite yeah. plane. Uh, so. Uh, no complaints on my end. Um, although it would have been nicer to spend a little more time in some of the the, the lower planes, um, Beastlands is all I care about. So yeah, yeah. I think like a part of me would have loved to spend even more time in the plane of fire. Uh, but if I had to pick a different plane that we didn't go to, the plane of air, just to see like another Ooh. different kind of Genasi society. We almost went that oh. one time, uh, and then we were too cool for school, and we uh, saved everyone without having to go to a different plane. But uh, I think the plane of air is probably one that we didn't go to that I would have loved to uh, see and just to just to get another Genasi society going on. Let's see what's going on with these funky towers. I um, think yeah. I would want I, I would have wanted to visit Aster at Elysium. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that would have been cool. Yeah, yeah. I had so much fun drawing Elysium on the big map poster, and we just never went there. 
<laughs> it's hard to it's there's not as much conflict in Elysium is kind of the thing. What? No. Which is why I had to admit. Uh, <laughs> well, it's kind of true. The the whole thing about it, like you you go there and you never want to leave. It's like you know, it's kind of addictive how good it is to be there. Which is uh, the reason not every one of the planeskip just moves there and you know everything is done. Um, I feel like Ease Guard. I, I, I wish that. Definitely the Beast Lands uh, and definitely Akron are probably my favorite, but we got to go there a couple times. So Easeguard is the one that we never did a real adventure in. Well, fair enough. You guys yeah. visited there, and then there was the little bit of stuff with hey, Eden with and fight. Voss. There was a little fight, but that wasn't that was, you know, that was fungus stuff. Mm -hmm. That was not a a an Easeguardian adventure. That was an adventure in Easeguard, you know? Mm -hmm. So I do uh I do wish we could have done more there. Uh, and maybe we will one day. This is gonna sound very basic of me. I think we could have stood to do some more material plane adventures. Honestly, yeah, no, there's so much cool stuff in the material plane, you know. Yeah, yeah I mean, it was, yeah. for some strange reason, it seems to have the most development in the general uh, lore <laughs> and the, the most uh -huh. plot hooks and fun dungeons. Hmm. I do love hmm. Waterdeep. I hate that I have to say it out loud on the podcast every time, but it's, <laughs> it's my—it's one of my favorite settings. Yeah, and we did Waterdeep see it very briefly. Cool. Waterdeep's pretty nice too. <laughs> <laughs> that's fired hilarious <laughs> i have one joke yes everyone does is the real secret uh anyone else have any other answers to that question uh, before i step on anyone else's car could be cool to go to car you never know um cool to go to car jailbreak episode <laughs> Go to Carcerai. It's it's the ultimate jailbreak. It would I could run a campaign about you guys escaping Carcerai. Mm. Going there is no problem, you know. Yes, going there. Right, yeah. yeah. Campaign three is us playing the the throwaway team that Hira mentions in episode one. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, well, this question from chat question. comes from Hannah Karen. Uh, to the rest of the crew, when did you guys find out about Virla's legendary choice? What was your reaction? So when did we find out that Austin about Austin and Virla's secret little chat that they did in the in the penultimate oh, episode? Yeah. I wasn't that right after we finished recording the episode. Uh, I think it was yeah. after we no, finished it, it, recording episode ten, right? It was after the fight, I think. Um, yeah. Well, so like okay. during during the break. Oh yeah. Well, because because I remember I thought that like. I think it might have made it into the episode. Like, I asked, like, wait, did you get to choose which of us got got? And you were like, no, no, it wasn't that. But it was bad. And then we got the, the short and skinny of it. Noir like, kept oh, making okay. these, like, cryptic-ass comments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the fight was stressful enough. And Noir, Noir just, <laughs> oh, God, just being asked to, like, wait and find out. And, oh, God. But we got through it. And it was Don't really cool. It. Interesting decision uh, um, to yeah, possibly cause... make him an NPC. Um, yeah, because we were over in the in the little like non session voice chat, uh -huh. and sometimes when that happens, it's because we're gonna get called in one at a time. So we we're like, <laughs> okay, okay, is this just a noir thing, or are we all gonna get called in there? Are we gonna like swap or whatever? And mm -hmm. we just had no idea. And it's like, all right, everyone else come back in. It's like, oh no, t <laughs> noir's in trouble with the teacher. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I I I wanted to tell him like <laughs> day like day one. And, but I, I I decided to save it until after mm -hmm. after episode nine after the fight because first of all wouldn't it be so badass that everyone lost their shit after I say and for my first legendary action <laughs> <laughs> you know it would yeah. have been so cool but I'm glad you didn't because then you can continue to play as Virlo when we do one shots yeah exactly. exactly I'm glad too we love we love having our magical robot boy with us forever. Um, and maybe those that is the deal still on like do you still have that option hanging over your head whenever i think so right austin, no, austin. <laughs> Dude, mm, uh, yeah I, I mean i guess i kind of imagined i feel like yeah i think that the the i feel like the the deal stays open um <laughs> it's not something i really had to think about but honestly i i, I would think it stays open yeah it would have to be done suitably dramatically, like the, yeah. the yeah. rising from a regular PC to a or from a regular you know person in the world to a explicitly legendary character has to be done suitably dramatically. But I can't imagine you doing it like casually. Like it, yeah. it would have to be during a fight where things were going very badly. So, I like yeah. the, I like the thing that you introduce where it's like this manifests itself during combat. It, it it's like a it, like you you are you are ex, it, it's kind of 
kind of like a sorcerer thing. You're extending the limits of what you can do mechanics wise, and you're in in the process. You're becoming a legendary character. I like I like how you introduced that. Mm-hmm. I don't see an instance in which like Virila is just like, all right, I'm good, and <laughs> just becomes a legendary. <laughs> yeah, character. exactly. Yeah, yeah. You, well, act, you, you forget to hit decline on, on the pop up button one morning, and you're like, oh fuck. <laughs> yeah. But being being Magister be. and being legendary are are related mm-hmm. but different, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Virla is the Magister and will be uh, until he gives it up or someone kills him for it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, th- that's happened already. He got all his power-ups. Becoming legendary is a thing that, you know, lots of beings in the Planescape have done. He just mm-hmm. has the option because he's the Magister. Mm-hmm. So. Excellent. Well, uh, let's take I another question. I check out his gun. <laughs> We'll dig another question here from chat from Leisha Joy. To all, if you had a D&D spell named after you in the possessive adjective noun style, what would it be called and what would it do? So think like Otto Luke's Resilient Sphere, Otto's Irresistible Dance, uh. Tensor's Floating Disc. If you had a spell that was Noir's blank blank, what would it be? Oh, us, not the characters? I guess it could be the characters if you wanted. I, if you had. So, you know, interpret you however you would like. Right. Interesting. Okay. God, there are so many Tumblr posts about, like, unethical wizard spells. <laughs> Noir's ability switcheroo. It allows you to switch the scores of two abilities so that I can always roll charisma checks with intelligence. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. Um, I do feel like there's an ability or a spell, like, <laughs> that's definitely a spell Virla could work on. Someone asked if Virla could make yeah, spells. Yeah, yeah, yeah. can make spells. I think I sent early in the campaign, I was like, here's a thing you could do with that room that ended up going to Finbar. You could make it a wizard study. Virla could mm-hmm. make spells. But yeah. that's not what you guys ended up doing. No, we made it a magic little garden for our bestest friend who then got married and moved out. <laughs> and yeah. now we just have a fun little garden. Where the dinosaur to hang out in. Yeah, yeah. And dinosaur. Yeah, yeah, Alan. Yeah, kazoo. He's, he's kazoo. Oh, kazoo. I know, but like, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but also Alan. Alan. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. I don't know. It'd have to be some sort of spell that, or, or an ability that allows you to roll a D100. Um, that has a whole bunch of <laughs> some, something crazy. Maybe a spell that allows you to, a sixth level spell that allows you to cast any fifth level spell, but at random, you don't get to pick. Mm. Oh my um, goodness. <laughs> yeah, that, I feel like that would be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Similarly, like Sophia's big red button, uh, and it just, you hit it and it does a D100 table of your DMs choosing. <laughs> like, yeah. It goes off. <laughs> I yeah. love. Uh, I never used to play like wild magic stuff. Not that I didn't like it. It's just like never really come up. Now I am obsessed with the idea. I'm like, I gotta play a mm-hmm. class where I'm gonna have to roll a d100 frequently. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. I love tables now. <laughs> I've turned uh, around on them. Oh no. Uh, Red's rule of cool. Mm. Uh, the the invocation begins with DM if you'll permit me, uh, <laughs> and goes from there, and it ends with you rolling an insight check. <laughs> Yeah, well, sometimes, <laughs> but the thing is, like, D and D is not like a like a storytelling game by its nature. It's a mm. it's a combat simulator, and then we just do a lot of yes. storytelling around it. And the number Very of times so. where yeah, and, and like sometimes that means it's like I have a cool idea, but the mechanics really aren't there to support it. So DM, if you mm-hmm. permit me, and then you have to talk it through and be like, does this work? Does this not work? Is this stretching the limits of the world? Does this break the canon? Does this establish a precedent we absolutely cannot keep? It's like how, you know, if if Virla becomes a legendary creature, uh, Noir stops getting to play Virla because Virla becomes too powerful. Um, you know, you don't want to mechanically sanction something that, that then destabilizes the entire meta. But sometimes you're like, I have a really cool move, but I don't know if I can do it. Um Half the times I say no to something like that are like, I don't know that it's that powerful, but I'm afraid of setting a precedent if it is. <laughs> yeah. Yes, very much so. But this is something I really respect about Austin as a DM is that he uh, is willing to hear you out. And if he doesn't think it's going to permanently break the game, we'll give you the fair shake on it uh, as someone who yeah. likes to push the big red button. Um, yeah, I really, Austin, thank you very much for um, letting me catapult that bomb oh, well- and all that stuff. <laughs> Thanks for letting We're all me here kill to be Blockett surprised, by getting you know. stabbed. <laughs> We're all here to be surprised. Thanks mm-hmm. for letting me wish, Mistra. Chat needs to know <laughs> yeah, that Leo is outside the door meowing quite loudly. Mm. Oh. I'll, I'll tell you right now, you're, you're lucky I was playing Finbar and not any other character, because if you put that wish in front of me, I I, <laughs> I, I don't even know what I was going to wish for. I, like I immediately genuinely don't in know. The, in the hall, just like... Yeah. I wish for a bunch of peanut butter crackers. 
Yeah. Like, I think so, Tame. I, I, I watched Wally pull like four cards from the from yeah, the yeah, deck like, of many things. Yeah, yeah. I, I wish for seven many decks things. of many things. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, uh... at one point, I had this idea while we were on Tunerath because it's on the back of a dead god. If I had access to a wish and I could bring something back in order to. Oh, oh that'd god. be sick. Oh, yeah. Uh, while Why we're on not? this note, we have a question in chat. Uh, Music enthusiast 135. On that note, what's your favorite thing about each other's DM and playing styles? Compliment each other. <laughs> oh, I could do a whole thing. I don't know if you, maybe as DM I should go uh, last or first. I don't know, but if you if you've got it top of mind, go, go for it, us. Tell us uh, pretty. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I really respect what every that? single person here brings something different. Um, I huge thanks to Red for being. People really want to know about Dexter. We'll get to that. I think. <laughs> uh, huge thanks for being i feel like i don't know if we're just if we're on the same wavelength or if you because you're very story savvy you would do this to any gm but <laughs> i feel like whenever i was setting something up and i was like please please to bite the bite the hook but by take the bait to go down the path please for the love of god uh you were always like sniffed out immediately you were like i think this is what's happening and this is like the way forward and it was a huge relief to me because like I could set up mysteries and you guys always, you always seem to like clue in, or if something was ambiguous, you always seem to, to guess what was correct and then confidently stick to it. Cause it's very easy in D and D to like come up with the right answer and then second guess yourself, right. And talk yourself out of the right answer. Mm -hmm. But you're, you're very good at, at sussing out what was dramatic and planned and made, you know, uh, what, what this, what the answer was and sticking to it. Uh, Wally is uh, an amazing mechanic, uh, a master of the mechanics, and you always the the there were there was no TPK because Wally was playing. I stand by that <laughs> yeah. very firmly. Without Wally, there would have been a lot more dead characters in this campaign, and not because Finbar is a very good healer, but because mm -hmm. Wally is extremely well versed in the mechanics and the tactics. Um, you're a very smart player, and it really let me put you guys through the fucking ringer. Uh, I really appreciate Noir's uh, just stick ab ability to do bad things to his character for the <laughs> drama, because I think it can be really easy to kind of like shelter. You're like, this is my guy. This is my best friend. Please don't kill him. <laughs> um, and, you know, you, not that you were taking like lethal risks with Virla, but you were really, really w ready to have him hurt for the drama. And of course, you know, uh, that wasn't a surprise to me. I've played with you before. I've seen you do that before. But I, it really made for some great drama. And you didn't always take the easy way out, um, especially with the wish. You took the dramatic way out. And uh, I really appreciate that. Um, and Sophia just has, like, lots of fun things that she's really eager to do. And it, it kind of spices up the campaign and keeps me on uh, on my toes. And, um, you know, you're, you're, you're always eager to kind of push what is, uh, what is possible in terms of, like, can I, you know, can I roll wild magic on this thing, right? You're you're eager to keep things light and silly, um, and I appreciate that because I can get very stuck in the rules myself. So having someone who's like constantly asking uh, an Emily Axford character, so to speak. Aww. Although I think I would, I think I would uh, uh, quit if I had Emily Axford as a player. <laughs> uh, I think she's too much. I don't think I could handle that level. But uh, that that's my adoration for all my players. Aww. Wow, Aww. that was beautiful. I'm sorry, I, I don't want to interrupt. Thank you. Cle Cleo managed to open the door, and now I'm having to fend her away from the recording equipment. <laughs> if there's one thing this I podcast like knows, it's how to have a cat interrupt it. Uh, Ziggy did come in and scream, and now she's asleep, so I'm sure we'll only have... Um... Uh, Austin, I don't know if Ellie's up to anything <laughs> in particular. Uh, is Ellie up to anything? Probably not. Uh, probably she's asleep in the window. That was where I left her. Amazing. Amazing. Oh, oh, she's man. pretty lazy. Okay. We had a mouse and she had nothing to do with it. She uh she could not care less. Hilarious. Oh. Uh should we just go down the list of, of everyone in the call? Just yeah, weigh in. That's, that's easiest. Uh oh, that's me then, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Put me yeah. On spot a little. I mean ugh. Austin, you have a, a really good sense of like pacing and I love your descriptions. They are really really for better or for worse they're very visceral <laughs> whenever they <laughs> really you. get to but it it really does a lot to kind of like help set the tone for one thing that's another thing you're really good at setting the tone for mm -hmm. 
for places and locations because like this could have been a this could have been a, a wacky time more wacky than than things usually are but you um you definitely have a way of 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 very effectively guiding us towards like the the feeling and the 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 vibe that you're trying to get for either the plane or just the the the, the campaign in general um yeah. Red for for someone who's been like who says that this is like your first time playing five year or whatever you seem to have a really you seem to have found a subclass multi class combination that seems to work really well for itself <laughs> and Thanks. I'm pretty impressed by that uh, I I I have to echo uh, Austin's sentiment with Wally because like the whole Wither and Bloom uh, oh, blood yeah. vial thing was like so clutch in the moment that 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 was i didn't fully appreciate your capabilities wally i i of course appreciated them you're you're an amazing player um but i didn't really realize how conniving you can be until that moment <laughs> uh i do what i and, can and sophia we can just riff off each other we're buds oh, yeah. and i'm glad that like uh our friendship has been reflected in Aww. in virla and danny's friendship <laughs> i'm eager for the audience to see what <laughs> what we have <laughs> next in Noir store and next. I have been discussing our dual bards uh, <laughs> next campaign and I cannot wait for you guys to see them oh, that's gonna be oh man it's gonna be great it's gonna be awesome oh boy yeah um, man Austin I love your DMing style I love that the I, I love that we follow the camera a lot of the time and oh yeah. that's right yeah very cool yeah. yeah and I I know how hard and daunting it is as a dm to be like okay i need the rest of the table to be cool with this but i'm going to be focusing on this one character for a hot minute because when it comes to cinematic storytelling you need to be able to do that you know you need to let the players kind of the rest of them be kind of up on a shelf for a little while while you follow one person at a time or while you build something up or while you essentially play a cutscene of like here's what you guys don't know is happening but here's what the villains are scheming on their little nautiloid ship um and I love that. I love that so much. And it does give us the opportunity to sort of sit back and watch the movie and be like, ooh, I can't wait for us to deal with that, um, which is fun. And it, it kind of helps, I think, break up the tension a little bit. Like, I feel like we never do more bits than when we are stressed out of our minds uh, <laughs> prepping for some kind of nightmare story. And I also, I like that we're fundamentally on the same side. Because, like, when we were stressing after the end of episode nine and we were all like, oh, man, are we... <laughs> Are we, are we gonna beef this at the finish line? You're like, you think you guys are worried about that? <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, you play all the bad guys, but we are trying to tell a good story together, um, and I I think that's fun. And you know, sometimes a good story involves having things that the characters don't like happen to them, and uh, we're all cool with that. And I like that you're cool with doing that to us because it, it 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 makes for a really good story. Um, Noir, I really like how you script things sometimes, uh, and I can <laughs> I like usually you. not tell. Uh, like, like sometimes I'm like, ah, I hear that that's been written, but, but it's, it's pretty rare. And yeah, you know, I've, I've kind of got an ear for like person reading off a script versus person ad libbing. I know that when I do that, you can really tell the difference. Uh, and I just like how it all works for Virla because Virla when he's being improvised and Virla when he's being scripted is very much the same character. Uh, and I like how sad he is, just on a profound <laughs> foundational level. Me too. Um, yeah, <laughs> just just a mess. Um, Sophia, I like how many times you come up with ideas that I would never have thought of in a million years. Um, and oftentimes, I, I really like how they completely reshape the space of the encounter. Um, mm -hmm. Like, catapulting the bomb was one thing. Bubbling the bomb, I think that yeah. was awesome. Yeah. Because, like... Like, I, the way that that fight changed when it turned into, like, okay, I need to keep the boys up, and I need, and, and Danny is, like, fighting her own private battle with the actual threat. I was like, great, this is, this is so much more tense than if we were all just chipping away at the same bad guy. Uh, and I, I think that the way that you can just reshape a comic, you know, I play a lot of, like, fighter types, and basically what you do there is you chip away at the bad guy. There's, there's not a lot of variety in, in the functionality of a frontline fighter, uh, so reshaping the battlefield is something that I don't tend to get to do, and I really respect how you can find very creative uses for abilities and spells to just make that happen, while also being the one who needs to be like, and then I need to edit this together, and I need it to be within the right time frame, and I, <laughs> I need this to work. So I, I think it's a very impressive juggling act. Um, 
Wally, I like how you've played two extremely different characters in the space of like two seasons and made both of them extremely likable in completely different ways. Man, I feel like I've been talking for like 10 straight minutes. I'm so sorry. <laughs> It's it's I it's because we're all silently. That's like, how this question's gonna go. We're all yeah. blushing and crying. Like, oh my god, my guests are so <laughs> sweet. Um, uh, Austin, I I threw you some compliments already on this podcast for being able to roll with uh, and and really you know go through the rules on all of my s- silly and stupid decisions. But I do really respect your ability to take your very uh, deep understanding of the rules as written and work with your players to put together something that is come to a decision that is at once satisfying for what they're trying to do uh, and does not fundamentally break the game i think you have an incredible uh measured response and you always give everything a fair shake and that is a very respectful and fun approach to the game system um and on top of that you just some of the best scene setting you can get in any dm anywhere from this guy like you want to know what a plane looks like you want to bring the planescape to life you get austin funk up in here and you tell him just to tell you a little story it's the best part of editing is when it's just like oh great austin's gonna talk for two minutes i gotta just like listen to some planescape lore it's it's awesome (laughs) um (laughs) i gotta go down the discord call to remember who i'm talking to (laughs) (laughs) uh noir my buddy my friend. <laughs> I feel like we're giving speeches at each other's weddings. <laughs> I was going to say this. <laughs> this is what Finbar and Elise's wedding would have been if the mushrooms hadn't jumped in. <laughs> just Elise just derail. sitting there going, why are they all talking about themselves? <laughs> yeah, anyone going to mention me? God, why? we would be those assholes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we uh, sure would be. Noir, you're you are my best friends. We've been friends for a long time. Uh, it's, nothing is more fun for me in an episode than when Virla and Danny got peered up. Uh, paired up to go off and do something uh, like the Furbolg village setting the traps and it's just the two of us Hell ping-ponging yeah. off of each other for like 30 minutes it's so fun uh, I cannot wait to continue this trend going forward um... Beer. <laughs> Red your genre savviness is your superpower but your ability to adapt that into the story that you want to tell is uh not one to ever be undermined i was always i'm always astounded by how you managed to make kiana respond intelligently and emotionally to what's going on around her uh you bring a certain like acting chops to this podcast that we would otherwise be lacking in the way that you manage to take your own knowledge and transfer it to your character's actions and I, i think it's incredibly impressive um uh, oh, wow. Also, so fun to be in the edit and be like, man, Red really called that like three episodes ago, <laughs> didn't she? <laughs> oh, man, I'm so glad. Yeah. Uh, and Wally, you know, echoing a lot of what's already been said, uh, so incredibly impressive that you played two very diverse characters. That you managed to make the mid-campaign character switch work is mm. incredibly impressive. Uh, and that you so quickly endeared us and the audience to Voss uh, after playing such a beloved character is impressive once again. Um, I really admire your deep, deep fundamental understanding of the rules of Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. Uh, <laughs> and I, I appreciate all the times that you have come to our aid and been like, uh, actually, <laughs> let me tell God. you something about these rules here. Um, and it's just a, it's a joy to get to, as someone who maybe fundamentally does not understand the rules of Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, get to play at a table where someone does and get to, to play off of each other. And I can't wait to see what your character in Campaign 2 is like, because if you manage to play five classes in one campaign, I cannot imagine <laughs> the crazy shit we're going to see next time. <laughs> I think, uh, I don't want to spoil, but I, I think Austin was like, yeah, by the next campaign, the only fight, uh, the only class we won't have had somebody play is fighter. Uh, and <laughs> like a full half of that is just because of Wally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. God. Um, I, I guess, well, unfortunately I'm last and there's not much I can say that hasn't already been said, but I'll, I'll <laughs> see what I can do. Um, Austin, really good friend of mine. Thank you for inviting me to the table. This has been a fantastic table. I can't ask for a better um, uh, table to have played at in all the, what, six years I've been playing D&D. Um, so thank you for the invite. I admire the level of discipline and restraint you show um, when putting sessions together. I'm always like, oh, Austin could have pushed this a little more. Austin could have pushed this a little more. But um, the amount of restraint and focus um, he brings to uh, each session um, is admirable. Uh, and I like that about you. Um, Moving on, Noir. Um, first time at the table playing with you. Absolutely fantastic. 
um, the energy that you bring to Virla. You're playing one of my favorite subclasses um, that I've had uh, the uh, pleasure of playing, and you brought a interesting and unique uh, perspective, which goes to show that um, there is a lot of room to play any given class and subclass um, in the game. And uh, Virla is easily one of my favorite um, wizard characters, and it's good to see. And I love the direction that you took him in. Thank you. Um, Red, again, genre savvy as uh, always, but um, yeah, no, you're, the way you've acted out Kiana is probably the, you've had a lot of really great moments that made me think, oh, sheesh, everybody here is really good at acting out their characters, I feel like. Uh, but yeah, no, absolutely fantastic. On top of all the other talents that you have, just you know, your voice acting is absolutely phenomenal. Um, and lastly, I, I don't think everyone here understands the level of respect that I have for Sophia. Not Aww. just for playing Danny at the table, but the fact that this wouldn't, all of this would not have happened without her. Like, she, yeah. she brought um, everyone here together, um, got the logistics out of the way, she edits the episodes, and she plays the character at the table. Um, I, I'd like to take the time to just thank you for putting it all together. I'm gonna cry Captain in real life, guys. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah let's I just casually do a round table of complimenting each other. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, that Ooh. incredibly sweet uh, diatribe <laughs> later. We're um, friends. Yeah, well, we've touched on our acting a little bit in this segment, so this question from the email feels like it's a nice jumping off point. Uh, to the whole group, what's your favorite moment of acting in the series? Uh, mine is Red screaming no after Kiana got sent back to Sigil by Danny. <laughs> so what's just like... Oh, they stole mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I would like to... I have an answer to this. Uh, Austin and Noir, when they we were in the Feywild and they were having that conversation between the Furbolg child and Virla about oh, yeah. so many trees. <laughs> oh, just it was so good. incredible like, yeah. set up and payoff. Everyone in it is talking how they should. I really, that's one of my favorite moments in the series. And that's really, <laughs> very yeah. rarely do I like <laughs> go into humiliating a player, but I really, <laughs> I really did set it up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh god uh, oh man there's it's hard to think of the act like there's i mean obviously the speech is uh i was so inspired by by noir's speech that i wrote up the other half of what was going on like uh, that was a great that was a great moment i love that and i loved noir cutting in his lines as that scene played out like yeah. i could see the tv edit in front of my <laughs> eyes and it was beautiful Oh, man. I feel like uh, Kiana threatening um, uh, what's his fuck too, and Dillian was a pretty Dillian. good moment. Yeah, Thanks. yeah. <laughs> what's his fuck? Uh, oh, I'm no. terrible with names. I'm horrendous with names. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is a good opportunity to secretly shout out uh, Austin's girlfriend, who names a lot of the NPCs for this game. Yes, thank you, Victoria, for <laughs> naming NPCs. I have a bunch of NPCs for next season for you to name already. Actually, oh, uh, amazing. Something like. <laughs> Uh, we have I've got fifty NPCs on a random chart, and I'm gonna guess about thirty five of them still need names. So <laughs> this is, I feel like this is one of the more subdued examples. But I remember there was this that one argument between Otto and Danny that got like really bad, and I yeah. I loved the little touch on how Danny ended that conversation. Just I remember like the tone being like really like oh this is an uncharacteristically serious moment for this character and i'm a sucker for those kinds of things so i, I thought you pulled that one off really well i think it was when he revealed like oh you wanna you wanna fuck with me the deed to the paraspora is this killer robot have fun and it's like oh yeah. no <laughs> <laughs> uh this was a bit later in the campaign but i really liked any time that Voss and Cressida talk because mm. like <laughs> oh Mm -hmm. You guys, yeah. you guys really sold this this imagery of like two broken people trying to trying to make themselves better and trying to do good by the people that they think that they have wronged and seeing I like I didn't re I didn't make the connection until Voss brought it up of like like you you guys are on similar trajectories but Voss is dealing it in it with a much uh, far differently than than Cressida is and mm. the the end result being that. Uh, Cressida is, is is trying to improve herself is is just the best ending to that. Yeah. 
I liked the, uh, it wasn't so much, like, the voice acting, but I liked the way that, uh, that Voss got played when he was feeble-minded, because, like, mm. that's a, that's <laughs> yeah. a hard challenge yeah. to, to give a player, is like, alright, I know you want to do these things, but your character is currently being artificially restrained in this way, Wh what are you gonna do? And I, I think it came out across very well. And also extremely heartwarming, where it's like, yeah. oh, the, no thoughts in that head except friend. It's like, oh. oh. In a similar but uh, sort of opposite emotional direction, when Virla was infected by Zygutmoy's madness and the reveal to the rest of the crew, <laughs> yeah. Noir mm -hmm. really bringing all of his dramatic monologue yeah. uh, chops to bear for that. And okay. it just so, so Theater chilling kid. and oh, incredible. I would say my favorite moment is not necessarily voice acting, but like a moment of coordination when we um, when we juiced the ship um, mm -hmm. to to hit a second planescape. Uh, easily one of my favorite moments in the podcast, mm -hmm. and everybody brought their A game to that. Um, yeah. Hell yeah. I, Hell yeah. I think we've all answered the question at this point, so uh, we'll jump to a couple others from chat. Uh, this one I also want to know the answer to. What's Voss's deal with ghosts? <laughs> it honestly it started off as a gag uh i i didn't really have any substance to it but the reality of it Ghost. is if i have if i were to give like an in-universe reason for it um in yeezgard you know when you die you come back the next day so there's no intermediate stage between the living and the dead um so to interact with the ghost is, is kind of creepy um, for boss is hmm. unsettling. You're either dead That's or alive. That's a really to him. clever no... answer to a question that arose because of a bit. I, yeah, I really that respect is. that. That's that's cool as hell. <laughs> yeah, it's always uh, fun to give characters just weird little quirks, and sometimes the better end in the back of your head is like, "Hey, I found a way to make this make sense and possibly be heartbreaking." Mm -hmm. And it's like, "Fuck yeah." <laughs> Uh, well, this question from chat from Matsy Nash to Austin. How does your depiction of the Planescape, the Astral Sea, and Wild Space differ from 5th edition sources? Makes more sense. Oh, uh, <laughs> so who said that? Oh, thank you. I, I do. Th <laughs> I think it makes more sense. It, yeah, so um, I d haven't liked the idea that uh, multiple material planes share the same cosmology. Uh, that seems silly to me. I'm like, they should all have different... Like, uh, um, what's good? Like, uh, Dragonlance and Forgotten Realms should not share the same sigil. That seems very strange to me. So, mm -hmm. I, like, uh, I came up with the notion that instead, there each multiverse is contained within its own sphere, which sits in wild space. And wild space is this big space between all of these worlds and these worlds of worlds. And that that's the reason so the reason uh, to distinguish between them the astral sea is a literal sea and wild space is just actual space and that each um transient plane each in between world in different planescapes might look different and each uh, that there would be parallels between them but that like many of them probably have a hell but that it would look very different depending on the ones you went to and i think that really jived nicely with the fact that like everyone has a completely different cosmology so rotten realms which is like our canon um uh prim prime material plane has this planescape and everyone has its own cosmology and all other ones have different cosmologies as well again probably with a lot of repeating motifs there's probably a lot of fey wilds out there but um uh yeah that's <laughs> did i explain that it's so it's different yeah. from fifth edition in that usually wild space is between prime material planes and then there's like the astral sea between them like wild space surrounds prime material planes goodness it's been a long time since i uh thought about this <laughs> uh anything that wasn't my version wild space right <laughs> ask pops they'll know Wild space surrounds <laughs> some prime material planes, and when you fly through it long enough, then you get to the astral sea. So it's kind of reversed. It's sort of reversed, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I don't really like that. I like the different worlds not being different planets, but being different planes. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's that's kind of how, how my yes. sensibilities work. Yeah. I hope I explained that well enough. It's extremely cool, and I, I really admire how you've been able to adapt this setting and make it work for like the kind of story that we were telling in this in this podcast like i feel like austin brand planescape tm is critical to the way that rolling with difficulty works at this point and uh it, it's really cool to get to explore it um 
to answer a question real quick in chat, uh, someone pointed out that Danny should not be blue anymore since she had to get remove curse cast on her to remove the evil flaws. Did that happen? I think Austin and I have sort of both arrived at the conclusion that at this point, Danny's been turned blue so many times that it's just like a permanent part of her being. <laughs> yes. Yeah. A, a, biz a bizarre um, uh, side effect of two things being turned blue twice and with having been resurrected after having been turned blue has affixed Danny into blue. So in order to change <laughs> colors, she would have to be cursed in some different new way. Yeah. Uh, so I could curse like... does not work function to, to take away the blue anymore. Someone could turn her like pink or purple or something, but I like the blue's not going to go away on its own. Yeah, her na her natural state is blue at this point. So um, it's also sick. I, yeah, also sick. I can't like this is why I am like, initially intended. You know, I'm like, ah, I, Danny was going to be orange for this whole campaign, and then <laughs> episode five, season it's, one, it, yeah. it works. It just works really early. Man, that was a yeah. great. Uh, man, I don't know if you guys. I kind of want to ask. I, I mean, I have my own questions. I'm curious about, but like <laughs> a great fight. I forgot about the fight against the prior the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt like that was pretty tense. Yeah, that, that yeah, fight definitely. And that, yeah, one does yeah not I remember get being a little enough, stressed out a, a about lot, that. I feel like <laughs> just a yeah. little. I was one of the first. Like obviously, people had gone down, but I think that was one of the first times that it. That was definitely the first time an NPC was like, I'll fucking kill this person. Yeah. <laughs> Surrender, I'll kill this person. They're on one death save. I'll just, yeah. I'll do it. I would yeah, like to so also it's always scary apologize. dealing with, uh, <laughs> it's always scary dealing with an enemy that will double tap. It's like, no, come on, that's cheating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. would like to formally apologize to all the artists and cosplayers out there who may have been interested in doing something with Danny, <laughs> uh, just for how frequently her appearance changed throughout this well, campaign. Yeah. There's, there's just so much diversity of character design within Danny herself. It's like, if you're tall, no problem. Yeah. Season three, Danny. Yeah. No you want to be orange Danny. with blue hair dye? There's that weird little period in the middle. Oh that one God, brief yeah. interval. Uh, well, this question comes from the email uh, from a robot enthusiast. Where does Virla's faceplate go when he's eating? Does it slide back into his head, or is it just sitting on the table next to him? Is there a hole for him to put food in? Does Virla have teeth? These questions have been plaguing me for ages. Thank you so much for sharing the Paraspera and her crew with us. Uh, Noir, tell us Virla's secrets. <laughs> it doesn't slide back like an, like an Iron Man helmet or anything. It literally just is a faceplate. He pops off, and it, it does sit at the table. No! It, what? It, it's, yeah, it's like... I don't know. It's like you would like how you would take off your mask whenever you go to sit down and eat. You know, mm -hmm. um, he doesn't have teeth. Uh, he, but but I will say that he does look like a Disneyland Abraham Lincoln animatronic without the skin. That's what he looks no! like underneath the, the face plate. I imagine it's like fucking like like Tio Morrow over here, or uh, like he doesn't necessarily need to chew. It just chops Maybe it up as it goes Morrow. down. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Great. Well, with that image, uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> this question oh, comes like from chat from bed. Candy Bar. Uh, what is everyone's favorite music track? Shout out to Dominic for a superb soundtrack. Shout out to my brother for the music for the show. Um, uh, I don't know how much the rest of the crew has actually listened to, to all the musical tracks or seen the names of them in isolation. I am forced to listen to them constantly all the time. Um, I really like the race theme that plays uh, that we wrote when we realized that there was going to be a street race uh, episode and um, the I, I got to shout out Party Time Time the song that that's, got that's the most yeah. comments on it just from the loop of it being so mind <laughs> yeah that was going to be my choice just because I, I didn't remember any of the others <laughs> yeah. I, I thought about using Party Time Time in the final episode when we were having our, our last yub nub, but I, I worried mm. that it would undercut the dramatic moments that may happen with uh, just the way that it really worms into your brain. And this is something me and Dom have talked about. He's like, yeah, I love that track. Uh, it does make you feel a little insane when you're listening to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we're working on some new music for campaign two new intro and a couple theme songs specific to our our new uh, genre as it were so look forward to some more some more music from him i'm very very excited about that um but we got uh, other questions unless anyone has any music tracks they remember the names of totally don't no Great. sorry uh, not off the top of my head i'm sorry from pops to austin in the chat uh what was dexter trying to mm. achieve with being alone in wild space <laughs> yes what was dexter's plan okay so dexter was i think 
I, I improvised some stuff, so obviously, like, uh, maybe I'm misremembering something, but to my memory, he was only lying about one thing, which is, he said, when you leave me on the ship, I'll just be, you know, dead in the water, and, you know, I'll never be able to, you know, uh, the, I'll be it. stuck here. It'll be such a punishment. He was... Uh, able to pilot the ship because of his arm. It was a psionic uh, graft, and so he uh, was uh, also psionic. He could have piloted the ship. Now, he also would have sailed around. He was going to stick to that light. He wasn't going to go back to the planescape and <laughs> risk running into them again. He was going to mm -hmm. leave and never come back. But he was going to be able to escape uh, trivially easily. Uh, but everything else was true. He was going to give them back both Docent and Emmy. He would have told Kiana what he what she wanted to know, and yeah, he he was he was perfectly honest about all of that. That was the it was the the lie within the truth. He he made the deal so sweet that they almost couldn't refuse it. Um, mm. and and uh, told them everything they already knew. And so he was uh, he just hid that one little lie within everything else, hoping they wouldn't be able to suss it out. Uh, and even if they did that, maybe they wouldn't care. But oh, so yeah, so his plan was just if we, fell off. So we wouldn't have been happy if we'd done the thing where we go and destroy the ship's engines more thoroughly. <laughs> <laughs> Which was uh, the thing we were discussing. I wanted to blow it up. Yeah, so bad. that that would have changed things. And if you had totally shipwrecked, if you had like marooned him, like if he had seen you blow up the ship, uh, instead of negotiating, what he would have done is just hide on the Paraspora. Yeah. Because yeah. mm -hmm. he is such a, a, a terrifying stealth. Wait for one of you guys to be alone for the first time and start icing you guys. Oh. Mm. So. Terrifying. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's good that we fought each other then. <laughs> I was kind of hoping your failsafe for him was going to be that he had a little, like, jetpack. He was just going to, like, <laughs> off into nah. space. It's like, I'll be stranded on the ship. Haha, -ha, suckers. Oh, he was just going to fly the ship somewhere else. He was going to go investigate a new world. Uh, which was, you know, his his plan all along. You know, he he had committed himself so far down that path. Uh, I'm sure, like, you know, perhaps with some self reflection, uh, plots within plots. Yes, Victoria. Uh, mm -hmm. With some self reflection, maybe he would have uh, and uh, moving past like some t t taking some difficult medicine, he might have been able to change his trajectory and like. Uh, make different choices but he had com he had done so many things to get to this point that he was just going to keep going like if you you know kind of like if he stops to think about what's gotten him here too much it's too crushing he was just going to keep justifying his actions by continuing forward so he was just going to go explore the planescape and be like this is what i plan to do this is what and emerson would have wanted this is what mm -hmm. emerson would have wanted i am going to keep doing it exactly yeah Damn. Oh, I love it when a villain's psychology is completely comprehensible, but they still suck. <laughs> yeah, Dexter like, very oh, much he's gave, sunk yeah. cost fallacy. The villain, perfect. <laughs> I love it. We've got yeah, a sort yeah, of... he was sunk cost. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just like he's in the... too deep. Yeah. In for a penny. Yeah. In for a pound. Yeah. We've got a sort of related oh, question gosh. here in chat uh, from the Dapper Spinosaur. Austin, who was your favorite antagonist to play and act, and crew, who was your favorite antagonist to take down and interact with? Let's talk about our villains. Let's talk about our, uh, our Ooh, bad guys. Yes. Tell me who your favorite with to take down first was. Uh, or tell that first. Mm. I'm curious. Uh, every time I got to fight uh, Ratchet and Clank, uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> just that slash clowning yeah. on those boys was a delight. But uh, I I would be remiss if I did not get to shout out the final takedown of Endelian, not Endelian, uh, for Danny. That was just yeah. Was... It was so fun to get to have a little catharsis and to clown on Endelian time and time again. How many mm -hmm. times must we teach you this lesson, old man, to culminate in uh, a nice mm -hmm. little bit of resolution for uh, Danny? I, I really liked having him as a recurring bad guy, and uh, that final fight I, I really enjoyed. I got chills. I, I, I honestly cool. had chills. Mm -hmm. I love so the brief moment where I could see Austin <laughs> recalculating, like, okay, she just killed their only source of information. How am I gonna? <laughs> mm, okay. And then yeah. it's like, and I quickly revive him, and it's like, okay. <laughs> Oh god, I was menu. so worried. Never in the campaign has there been a where like you guys have I try not to set up things that are like hard, you know, funnels. Like if they don't do this, they can't mm -hmm. proceed because uh -huh. that's a great way to screw up your campaign. But I felt like it was pretty clear. So I was like <laughs> I wasn't that worried. And then you killed it. I was so worried. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, I belated uh, compliment, Sophia. I really respect how you can make Austin shit his pants sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> if it makes you guys feel any better, oh, uh, I was also about to shit my pants because I had to do the calculation of how many squares can Danny move right now to get within yeah. range for all of this to work and action economy. And like, I might have done more hard math in the last 30 seconds of that fight than I've done in the entire campaign. And we know that I'm not good at math, so that was hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I liked it when we fought Vlocketh. It was like Ooh. a celebrity cameo. Yeah. It was, yeah. She was such a bitch and I loved it. We fought Vlocketh right in the middle of me getting to the uh, end of Act 1 in Baldur's Gate 3 for the first time. And so it really did feel like a celebrity cameo for me. It was like, Vlocketh! I already. No way. <laughs> I, I like that moment where we were like, no, it can't be her. We're not that high level yet. <laughs> But uh, we were, apparently. Oh, yeah. No, once you hit, like, past, like, level 12, 12 it's, yeah. it's literally, they'll throw anybody at you. Um, and <laughs> you either have to live or you just fought a lower version of them. And it's just like, okay, great. That happened. Mm -hmm. That's great. Hopefully it doesn't happen again. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it most likely would happen again. He dies. So. He dies. To, to keep on getting this Endelian train chugging along. My favorite was the second fight we had against Endelian because like the 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 catharsis of getting our shit kicked in the first time yeah. versus get uh, uh, kicking Endelian's shit in the second time. Like yeah. that was a that was a great turnaround and the the catharsis that I felt from that was awesome. Yeah, no, Finbar got to take the kids gloves off and it, it was nice. It was real nice. I really liked fighting Agden too. I feel like we forget about him because it was so oh, early on in the campaign. That was fun. But that was a fun yeah. villain yeah. encounter. Yeah. yeah. Was, were... What was that? He said something like, uh, my favorite sound is crying or something <laughs> yeah. like that. It's like when, when people like, scream, the... when I take things away from them, and we were like, ha, 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 cool. I like how it was kind everyone, of like... We had that little side chat, and everyone was sending like, gifts that were like, that's going to be a yikes from me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> God, I think, I, uh, I think two shot Agden comes back as a lich. <laughs> we all have to just mm, deal with again. it again. Oh, <laughs> he's been busy. Uh, let me. My favorite to play, I think, was uh, I, I really love playing Kinziru. They didn't fight him, but he's definitely like kind of an antagonist. What a bitch! Uh, I really liked playing Kinziru, and then um, I mean, Dexter was obviously great, and all the mind flayers were spooky. But I really liked uh, I liked Malo Cibrius from season two. Ooh. I liked that dude. Actually, yes, Malo yeah. Cibrius, um and uh, Exotico were um, yeah the same really person. Cool. Yeah, I, I uh, liked characters. I, I liked them as just like this nihilist, you know. <laughs> If you're gonna play Dungeons and Dragons, you gotta have a dragon at some point, and what a dragon to have, you know? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're getting some Croy questions in chat, so we might pivot a little bit here. Uh, Croy update. Also, how does Lula feel about Roy? Austin, tell us about your NPCs. Uh, I mean, uh, Croy is exactly where you saw, which is that Crusted is going to be a, 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 the captain of a crew for the other, uh, for the for the B team. They've got plans that have to do with helping the monks out and also specifically kind of helping people. Pardon me. Uh, I, I wolfed down dinner before I came here. Um, uh <laughs> People who have been in similar situations to both Cressida and Ioni, right, in these, like, weird cult-like groups and uh, who don't like the decisions they're being forced to make. Hmm. So she's going to do that while also coming back to visit Roy. So Roy's got a job. They're going to they're gonna see if they uh, if things can't work oh. out. And uh, starting off pretty casual but regular. <laughs> uh, and Lula, Lula likes Roy. What's not to like about Roy? I don't think anyone in the Planescape doesn't like Roy. Roy has the vibe of someone who gets along with, like, every dog they meet, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, exactly. Roy walks Roy, down the street you know, and just, like... Roy oh, is a big golden retriever, so... Yeah, yeah. Like... yeah. Roy's basically a Disney prince just vibing. I'm glad we got yeah, to see as much of Roy as we did, because I was a little worried when I... When it, because uh, the Heap didn't originally have that many NPCs associated with it. It was between seasons one and season two that I was like, I guess I should put some more stuff happening in my backstory for us to play with. And Roy was part of that. Uh, and just, like great to actually get to um see see one of my boys showing up and thriving in the planescape doing his he got out shit. he got out i think yeah, that i knew everyone was gonna be, be so happy about that 
think him and Cressid are going to be the funniest possible odd couple for anyone to encounter. <laughs> like, Cressid is off being unbelievably scary in her job and gets a sending from her boyfriend. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> yeah, babe, I'll pick up the eggs and I'll be back. I love you too. Bye. Lula says hi. All right, where were we, you scum? <laughs> <laughs> Best outcome. Uh, can all of our fr- characters in the second campaign just know Roy and be friends with him? <laughs> No. Just this nice young man running a book club. <laughs> Aww. Our buddy. Uh, well, this question right. comes from yes. chat. Uh, question for the crew. What's something in terms of fan reaction you could never have imagined happened when you started the series? From art, fanfic, crafts, etc. So something in the fan reaction that surprised you uh, as we were going through making the show. Got some really good fan animations. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I didn't expect. Oh, I, oh mm-hmm. I, I was just going to say, I didn't, I didn't expect ah. people to be so sentimental <laughs> at the end of the the campaign. I guess Very like, sweet. yeah, just like people saying like, I've been here since the beginning. It's been two two years, and I, this was a very formative period of my life. And like, first of all, I fully forgot that we've been going for two years at this point. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't realize that yeah. it hasn't been that long, but. Yeah, no, just like seeing everyone kind of send their their wishes, uh, well wishes and and congratulations. Uh, I, I I was floored. So yeah, it was kind of crazy to see how many people were like, "Oh yeah, I was starting college when this, and now I'm like this far in," or like I was in this point in my life when this is happening, and now it, I'm here. It's like it really makes me feel old. Uh, no, it really makes uh, <laughs> it really makes me feel like a lot of time has passed. Um, which, you know, it's only, uh, not quite 50 episodes, but at yeah. the same time, you know, it's, it's gone on for quite a long time. Personally, mm-hmm. uh, like the, the fan country, obviously like anyone caring has been hugely, uh, exciting and surprising. Uh, but I, I really do love how many people seem to love doing, uh, Maxim art because mm-hmm. obviously yeah. as the DM, you're like, yeah, all the, the PCs are the heroes and they're going to get all the love, but I've really appreciated that there's an NPC that, uh, that gets so much attention out there, uh, warms my heart. <laughs> Mm-hmm. yeah kind of similarly like one of the and we, we've we always had this like the best thing for us to hear is that you listened to the podcast and then thought oh i want to play a ttrpg and then went and started mm-hmm. your own home game or joined a table and like that is just so uh heartwarming to hear how many people have listened to the show and have been like great i want to try this cool new hobby and make new friends and like tell my own stories and roll my own dice and i just think that is so fantastic um in a less sentimental note i was <laughs> nothing was more surprising than waking up one morning and finding out that uh everyone in the discord was shocked and amazed that roy was 26 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. broke the fans for a little bit uh, guys that's uh, young all right that's yeah. young. And then that, like young. it's young it's like we're all in the vicinity of 26 yeah at least like, <laughs> so we were like yeah that makes perfect sense you know a young adult getting his legs under him and everyone was like oh my god he's old <laughs> i know I yeah so old in my life is that morning but uh it's just that people care that much that they they like these characters beyond the pcs beyond the players is is really really heartwarming so uh i'm sure we'll continue to shock and surprise you with the ages of characters that we can create in the future <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll, and I'll say, um, as someone who tends to over design the characters just a little bit, and thank you for dealing with the redesigns throughout the seasons, I'm surprised by how faithful to the original designs that you guys keep um, when you do the fan art. And I'm just like, okay, maybe, maybe it is uh, feasible to, uh, maybe this is okay, you know, like as some, maybe over designing them is is just my thing, and I should not tone it down. <laughs> so thank you for keeping the designs as uh, to what I normally design them as. Uh, and thanks for the fan art. Uh, it's easily my favorite cha- channel in the Discord. Um, I love it when you guys post fan art. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Otto love, yes. Otto's a good, Otto. Otto's not a good dude, but he's a great NPC. That's my, that's, mm-hmm. I agree He's so that. important to be there to play off of and to have stories involving and just such a scumbag of a dude. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. The difference between be a good, good person and a no good comments. character is yeah. fucking light years. Uh, we got another question. We're going to take this one from the email. Greetings, crew of the Paraspora. Thank you for filling my travels and sleepless nights with stress and joy. Question for Austin. What were all the weird little dudes that the crew could have met in the maze? <gasps> oh, no. 
the road not taken. Tell us a little Oh, news. oh, oh, in a Ubatu's. Yeah. Upteo's. Oops, sorry, yeah. Upteo. Those little okay. guys so, that were sorry, like, yeah. yeah. So in our home game, my DM <laughs> no, can't yeah. fucking read for shit. So he always <laughs> says char- like, character names wrong. So he was like, oh, yeah, this this god Ubatu. And we went, that's great, Ubatu. And then we played a whole campaign calling him Ubatu. And then I Googled it later. I'm like, you dumbass, it's Upteo. <laughs> uh, many, many, many characters like that. Anyway, so U- Uteo. Uh, fuck. What were all the the guys that they could have met in the um? Uh, what if thread was that? I have to go back to my uh season season five episode four. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, failures included having to fight two allosaurs, one giant oh. crocodile. That would have been Ooh. dope because you would have been deep underwater and it would have been trying to drown you. Uh. Mm. I had a minotaur. I'm not sure why I had a minotaur on there. I'm sure I had reasons. Um, uh, some lizard folk from Ooh. Flea Mortals, uh, the Ankeg, uh, and then uh, later reused in a different encounter, the Fossil Cryptic, uh, which you guys did fight in the uh, intrusion of Elemental Earth on the uh, Astral oh, Plane. Yeah. Where you... oh. uh, the and then on a success, uh, which... Um, Two characters ended up meeting Upteo himself, so that was the ultimate success. But the other things that you might have met were a Braxit, uh, which is like a big humanoid Triceratops thing, uh, and he would have been like a chill dude and would have like heard you out, like like what would have tried to give you some life advice. Uh, the Schwingas, which we did meet, uh, mm-hmm. I believe Danny mm-hmm. met those. Yes. Uh, uh, so the Beast Lands have are ruled by the Anna, the Beast Lords. And they are just faction aligned. So there's a lion lord, there's, mm-hmm. you know, a wolf lord. Every species has its own lord who rules over them. And the, the most cunning and sinister, maybe not sinister, the most cunning and, um, like, obsessed with information and stuff is the rat lord. He has agents all over the beast lines. And rat so lord? someone could have met, met the someone could have met the rats. Oh, no. There. No. Uh, oh, my God. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there was a lizard folk hunter who was also trapped there, who you could have recruited for the fight. Um, uh, a Dinosuchus companion who could have been recruited for the fight, uh, or an Empyrean stag, which is an extremely rare celestial beast uh, that would have granted you one truthful answer to any question. <laughs> Virla wow. continues to collect forbidden knowledge. In the <laughs> uh, yeah, so those were all the things that could have happened. Excellent. Damn. Uh, well, we've got um, another question from the email. Uh, if the crew took the deal with Dexter, however unlikely, what were you going to spend episode 10 doing? An unexpected confrontation upon the return to the Planescape and even more even more heartfelt character moments, a clip show, what would it have been? Um, I think we originally, in vague, because we don't, you know, it's improv. We don't really know what Austin's going to do next necessarily. Uh, but we sort of had discussed the final episode being the the epilogue, the everyone meets in a tavern, has their little party thing beforehand. So I was under the impression that was what it was going to be until we decided to deck Dexter. But uh, Austin, do you have any insight into that? What would have happened? Well, I would have talked to you guys about expanding the, the postscript then. Um, mm. uh, yeah, I mean, there was, you know, who knows what information might have given you guys might have decided to do different routes. I would have... Probably instead of putting everything together in Sigil at the end like that, I would have done something kind of akin to the Tales of the Planescape and let you guys do some solo mm-hmm. stuff around the Planescape. Maybe we would have gotten to see Otto again, for example. Uh, maybe mm-hmm. we would have like gone to visit Maxim somewhere and you guys all could have talked to him, things like that. There, It would have been a little bit more episodic and like tying off loose ends one at a time instead of... Yubnub, everyone is at a party. Obviously, Yubnub, everyone's at a party worked uh, perfectly well and was great fun. But uh, yeah, that was uh, that, that's probably what would have happened. It would have been, I think, less dramatic but satisfying in its own way. So, a lot of people want to know if I had a backup plan for a TPK. Uh, no, I would have had to come up with some shit if they all died. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been that's... a catastrophic failure on many levels. Yeah. Yeah. It would have oh, been man. clean tie up. Everything would have been cleaned up. Would have been good, yeah. You know? We'd already saved the Planescape at that point, so really it was yeah. just, you know. I mean, like, I gave, I knew that if it was close to a TPK, I gave one character the ability to become legendary. Like, I'd already kind of set myself yeah. up for a get out of jail free card if I had to, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. If, <laughs> it's just the rest of us experiencing Noir's cryptic allusions to such a fallback plan. Don't worry oh, about man. it. 
Yeah. yeah, and you know, if it had been if it had been like real dire, um, like if multiple characters had died and Virla couldn't bring them, let's imagine like Virla has one revivify, he gets Dexter, but everyone else is dead, he brings back one. Then you know, you guys know people who can raise the dead, but it would have been a a good news bad news kind of ending where it would have been like cool because you got someone raised from the dead, like they would have probably had their. For example, if you had we talked about this a little bit, if you had Hans raise you from the dead, then. It would have been like, cool, you're alive, but you owe um, uh, Lavender or something. So, like, not that you can't be, like, part of the crew, not that you can't, uh, you know, be friends with all these people, but you're going to have to go do some Lavender shit, and maybe for a long time. So, you know, it, it would have taken away a little bit of your agency at the end, even as everyone lived. So that would be the good news, bad news, right? Like, unless full wipe, I don't think everyone would have stayed dead. And even then, I'm sure that there was, Mistra would probably intervene however, however she could. But, yeah, you uh, do have kind of a, a, a get out of TPK free with the yeah. fact that we've got at least one god in our corner and like several yeah. other divine entities fighting for a piece of Virla. So, yeah, probably what would have happened is that um, if Virla hadn't taken the legendary and had died, Mistra would have come to him and been like, I can help, but you have to basically you have to become NPC. Mm, and yeah. uh, then she can't directly intervene, but she can do some pretty fucking powerful shit to intervene. Uh, we might have seen some new characters uh, appear on the battlefield, for example. Oh, awesome. That reminds me. I, I feel like there must be something else up with that bard lady. Okay. <laughs> What's up with that person? Oh, I, uh, a cat? Cat uh, yeah. Cat is exactly yeah. what she appears. Uh, yeah. She is That's just, I, she I is just um, she is as a, as a general safety, like she is mysterious for a reason as a general safety wandering around the planescape thing she is more powerful than she lets on like she kind of pretends like she's like a second or third level bard she's more like a eighth or ninth level bard but she's you know she's not sinister or malicious she's not she doesn't have any like real hidden intentions uh she's just more powerful than she lets on generally which is just how she carries herself um to be safe you know okay. Uh, we'll take another question here from the chat. Uh, for the cast, since we never got the beach day adventure, what sort of <laughs> outfits do you think the various members of the crew would wear, and what beach activities do you think they would enjoy the most? Uh. Uh, I think Danny, and I think maybe for season two, I had it in my mind that I was going to draw, like, these big landscape, all the characters doing fun little things, kind of a la like the One Piece covers of just like these will be oh, our promo yeah. art for the season. <laughs> and I did it exactly once, and then it was too much work. Uh, but I did. It was the beach day scene, and in it, Danny's wearing like a blue and white flame Guy Fieri style button down over a bathing suit, and I imagine that's probably her beach day attire. Para aviators, mm -hmm. margarita, it's a can of oil for the cannon. That's. That's her, her hold up. And I imagine she doesn't like water very much. So it's probably a lot of just laying in the sun, turning mm -hmm. sand to glass and shit. It's Kiana's normal outfit, but with smaller pants. <laughs> <laughs> Virla would wear... Virla would not be in any different clothing, but he would have a parasol. Yes. And this is totally not <laughs> taken from how I've been yeah. at beaches. Yeah. <laughs> Wearing not like the, the execs... <laughs> Voss is exactly two hundred percent the sand guardian, guardian of the sand. Excellent. Um, oh yeah. He'd be getting up, up and down. He'd be up and down the beach. He, you'd never find him in the same spot. He'd be in the water at one point. He'd be in the sand building sand castles or digging a giant hole. That man will be all over the place. Meanwhile, uh, Finbar would have snuck a grill. Uh, depending on the kind of <laughs> beach it is, he, yeah, he'd yeah. have a grill up and he'd be uh, with a a beer in hand, uh, cooking. So amazing. I can imagine Finbar in like those old timey nineteen twenties yeah. uh, yep. men's swimsuits, just the like, full like shorts, the, the full... stripy yeah. top. Yeah, yeah. Yes. A little uh, straw hat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. God. Uh, yeah, I like the combination of like Voss is buried in the sand. Danny is building the most intricate sand castle uh, cage contraption possible <laughs> around him. It's just like. Mm. There's so much synergy here between the cast and the beach. It's a shame we never got to go to the beach. I think it's like, like Danny like participates in the willful burying of Voss, then gets distracted building a sandcastle around Voss's head. Voss mm -hmm. becomes completely difficult to find. <laughs> it's like on the way back, like, are we forgetting somebody? I imagine because my family goes down the shore a lot, and I got a lot of younger cousins and a lot of uncles. And the thing that we'll do is we'll make like a twenty-person chair 
semicircle in the middle of the sand, but then the tide starts to come in. You don't want to pull all your chairs back. Um, so there's always, and usually it's me, someone in the family who, with all the younger cousins, ends up having to just dig the biggest possible trench to protect and shore up yourself from the incoming tide. Uh, and I imagine that Danny is executing some level of that, of like, well, what can I, what kind of fortifications can I make with the resources available to me on this beach? Uh, and I imagine that she'd be better at it than I am, given her understanding of engineering and my lack of it. Yeah. Um, well, Austin, you said you had some questions for us, and I'm curious if the rest of the cast might have questions for each other. So we're going to take one last one from chat here, and then I'm going to open it up to uh, anyone who's actually on this call, if there's anything that you've been wondering about from Ooh. the campaign that you want to ask the other players or, the, or Austin. So this is the last one we'll take from chat for a little bit. Um, if each character had the option to send cast ascending to their season one, episode one self, what would they say? Their past self knows it's from their future self. So send a message from the future to your old, your old self. Mm. It gets oh, better. Finn Bars is easy. Uh, he he apologized to Elise. <laughs> Be nice to your just, wife. <laughs> just straight up, just like you can't. Uh, you have so much on your plate. You got to stop forgetting the people that are important. Go talk to Elise. Straight up. Farrell would just say that it gets better. Like, oh. yeah. Danny would tell Danny to reread her lease. Please double check your contract. <laughs> and season one, Danny would be snarky and just deflect and ask why she's blue. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure? And like, you sure that's like actually slightly me? taller. <laughs> you really, you really yeah. should consider buying clothes that aren't in an orange and brown color palette. Just trust me, it's gonna, you're, you're gonna be thinking. <laughs> Not even a be nice to Egan. <laughs> oh, right, you, know, oh. you know what? No, that's a much better answer. <laughs> <laughs> that's always the good punch. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, Kiana tells, tells Kiana to keep fighting. Yeah. Amazing. All right. Amazing. Well, then we'll open it up to the floor. Uh, anyone in, in cast have questions for the rest of us? Yeah. Uh, what's, I'll what's... Ask... Oh, no, 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 yeah, no you, go, you go, you go first. You go first. Oh, I was going to say, we already kind of asked us about, like, what villain was your favorite to defeat, but did you guys have a favorite, like, encounter? Hmm. Was there a favorite mm. fight that you had? Because not all of them were really against like big villains, but some of them were pretty dramatic, I feel like. I thought the, the fight in the uh, guest episode where we had Hans was really funny because <laughs> I had no idea what level he was. Yeah. <laughs> so I was really like, oh no, we have to keep this wimpy sad boy out of danger. And he's like, oh, don't worry. I think I can do something. And then busts out fucking angelic wings and like fifth level <laughs> spells. And I was like, oh right <laughs> the old uh why was she up there this whole time bit <laughs> uh, yes oh that's exactly what i knew was gonna happen because blue was like i'm gonna play this sad wet guy and i was like perfect <laughs> you want to be high level <laughs> blue not the first Austin's time i've done that trap card of i love a, just a sad wet guy <laughs> and now i will make just him sad. Not, not the first time i've had a, a guest npc uh, a guest pc be like way <sighs> higher level and pretending to be lower level <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um other questions? Well, what strangers deal? Yeah. Oh, what, what strangers deal? What oh, strangers I, I, deal? I, I I did cut off before I heard everyone's answers, but yeah, I will Austin, answer this quickly. It's a what real is easy deal? mistake to make, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it was, to be fair though, it was my own question. So, uh, what is <laughs> I'll answer strangers. Make deal. It better. That makes it worse if anything. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> So Stranger's Deal, the, the deal with the pyramid is that it's a, it was a spell jammer made a really, really, really long time ago in a place called Kalamshan in the Prime Material Plane. And a bunch of rich people uh, put it together and decided to go live on the Astral Sea because they thought it would make them immortal, which technically it would. But, and this was a clue to what happened with Virla if you guys had decided to investigate it too much. But when they were on the Astral Sea, uh, uh, like partying it up constantly because you don't need to eat or sleep or anything. You don't age. So they were just like, this is paradise. Uh, and then they were hit with an astral, uh, with a psychic storm. And the psychic storm destroyed their bodies, but pre preserved their, like, their 
emotional apparitions in place. So that's why he kept seeing them like dancing and like laughing and hanging out and stuff like that. Oh because the, they're like the, the last emotion they were feeling was captured here in place. And uh, that was Stranger had been around so long that they had forgotten who they were and everything. The combination of being immortal and having a like parasite that is half of you, this other unknowable being in your body that's keeping you alive had destroyed their mind they couldn't remember and so searching the planescape for any way to recall their memories they came across this like this um time capsule emotional vessel and they were studying it and they were obsessed with it and they said they had a line that was like why do they get to remember like why do they get to 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 be for why does the pain last forever or something like that i forget but uh, that, so that's what was going on with Stranger. So who is Stranger? Impossible to know. It is far too old a question for anyone to ever answer at this point. But what was the pyramid and why was Stranger there? That's the reason for it. Yeah, that's sick. That's one of the, that's one of the creepiest versions of a ghost ship I've ever heard of. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. Now we should have stolen it and turned it into a casino. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the ghost ship party forever, the... and so can you. <laughs> my favorite fight was the train heist in hell because that. Oh was my god! Oh, good shit. Episode train two. heist. Train heist. That whole the whole setup of like, here's how we're going to here's how we're going to get on the train, and then like the execution of it with like fighting your way through to the back, and then finding Enoch at the end. It was like, mm. yeah. Oh, I can see it, and I can see it I in the love... animation that we're definitely going to have. I love that <laughs> train heist from hell. I love the 30 minutes before we actually do the train heist where we have to debate how centrifugal force works for <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it was like yeah. trying to like listen for the vibrations and the rails <laughs> to see when it's coming. If we grease the rails, it'll go so fast that when it hits the turn, the, the force will carry it over there. Yep. <laughs> That's episode two, oh, guys. Really we were going off yeah. the rails in episode yeah. two. Get it? Right. You know what's crazy? Yeah. It's it's not it's not the like it won't be the last time we we um discuss batshit crazy plans like blowing up the volcano was easily <laughs> that was so good was like if I was the DM I would have let it happen but um that again that's Austin was showing some a, a little restraint there but uh mm -hmm. really good moment that was the same that was the second time we would have fought in Dalian right. Uh, no, I thought that was the first. That was so. no, like blowing up. I thought blowing the up the volcano was. Oh yeah, volcano. that was. Okay. Blowing up yeah. the volcano was on the second time we went back. There, we're like, well, we oh, need a strategy was, to get uh, everyone out of the volcano. Well, yeah, because yeah. I assumed the we moment knew about that Austin introduced the idea of there's a volcano here, my brain immediately yep. went, oh, we should try and blow up the volcano. But I think the time we debated it the most was the second time we went to the volcano. <laughs> yeah, and we already knew about Endelian because uh, I think that was when Enoch had been like, maybe if you defeat him in single combat, he will like give you information. Yeah. And then we did not do that. <laughs> yeah, so that was like a that was a play of like. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, just trying to, because, like, the Get Yankee are so fanatical in general, yeah. uh, that it's, like, e e trying to get information from them is tr trying to pull blood from a stone. You have to be very creative. A uh, great moment, by the way, I really respect, and it's not the first time in a game Noir has done this, but, uh, <laughs> trying to get information from the Mind Flayer, thinking differently, I think it's really yeah. easy to fall into the, like, mm -hmm. well, why isn't, we're scary, just tell us the information, just tell us. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, you have to really, like, if you're gonna get information from from a, a strong-willed NPC, you have to give them something. Like it has to be a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. uh, you you can't just get what you want without paying any cost. And uh, respect to Noir for doing that, uh, and uh, respect to you guys for managing to get some stuff out of Endelian, even though it uh, kind of flopped. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. People do want to know about that um salamander that was in the volcano as well i feel like this is oh like... <laughs> the telestial the salamander oh. they they the telestial lottle they use oh my god what episode was that season three episode one uh <laughs> the telestial lottle let's see the if i can weird find my information that on that away. uh yes the telestial lottle was being used to harvest the metal that i don't think it was as hard as it was something else that was coming out of it um and yeah, they were just they were just using it. They were like just treating it really inhumanely, um, and yeah, that's that's. I don't think there was a big. It was Zardazil. There, I don't think there was a big mystery around it so much as that it was 
a very sacred place to the fire giants who lived there. Uh, this is where this, you know, they were harvesting this very important thing and they were just treating the, the, uh, the creature very badly to do it, but they didn't, weren't really interested in, in that <laughs> at all. They weren't really interested in caring about that. So, uh, yeah. And then the Githy Yankee, uh, it was, it was all, Oh my goodness. It was so long ago. It was all a very carefully plotted together. Um, Mistra pulling some strings to make that confrontation happen. Uh, because, like, she didn't control anyone, but she helped set, like, make sure information was passed between sources so that Otto would send the crew to confront there and meet Delian. Because she was trying to help put Virla off, to, to fulfill the promise, to put Virla on the, on the collision course with his past. So, that was all, mm -hmm. that was all part of why that happened. Within plot. Plots oh, within yeah. plots within plots. Yeah, so... That's yep, and uh, the slush lot is still there to this day. Mm -hmm. Oh, not anymore. We're gonna go fucking break that guy. <laughs> Three shot. Uh. Oh man, more questions. Do you guys have more, more, uh, more questions or anything? Like, uh. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember. Yeah. Someone uh. asked what um, Emerson's deal was. Emerson was psionic, and Emerson, oh, this I'll confirm. Emerson was psionic and dreamed even when he shouldn't have dreamed because he was a mech knight because he was a descendant of one of the original crew yes, yes! Oh. so oh. and and he did not know for sure he was confident with it if you would asked him he would have said yes but he did not know for sure and there probably is no way of, of knowing for sure but he believed and did not say this to anyone else but he believed that the crew were also all descendants. The all descendants. Let's fucking go. Yes. Yes. He, helped, he, helped, he helped ascend old because he believed that. Whether that's true or not remains to be seen, and is probably impossible to say. But he just had a strong feeling that that was the case. He he he, he really believed that you got that that they were all picking up a torch that had been left by ancestors, um, and that was true for him. If it was true for anyone else, is unclear. Extremely cool. That's, that's awesome. Rad. Um, is that also the reason why I saw someone ask this question? Is that also the reason why the the Parasper responds to psionics? Just because like mm -hmm. Emerson yep, was yep, 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 yeah, it's yeah. response to psionics because it's it's his uh, it's his ship. It's been it's been built up to work for him, um, and psionics works really well out in you know uh, yeah. There's, there's oh, man, it's been so long since I came up with reasons, and sometimes I, I add more reasons, or if it hasn't been revealed, I change the reason um, to make it make more sense. So, but yeah, it was because it was his ship. It was attuned. It, it was built for him to fly it very well. Um, and that also has to do with the, uh, the astral sea and the, and wild space being places of thought being a powerful tool because they're, they're between material worlds. Mm. So, uh, our mothers and fathers. Yep, exactly. Hannah, Karen. God, that's so cool. <laughs> um, yep. So that's the reason. Yeah. This is a question that's actually from chat, but I would love to know the answer to, uh, if not Virla, who is Mistra's favorite of the crew of the Paraspera? <laughs> <laughs> Who's Mistress' favorite? Who's Mistress' um, favorite? That's not aside from her Vera, special it's not Yeah, yeah. God, I wanted the chance to hang The real out twist so is bad. that even the real twist is that even with Virla, Mister has another favorite. <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely. <laughs> I think she probably thinks Danny is too reckless with magic. <laughs> Uh, Danny and gods don't and have good relationships in general. Voss is not like she probably likes Kiana best because she's a she's neutral good and she kind of vibes with Kiana being a pretty decent person in general. Uh, default, probably she would my like favorite way to win. Pro pro probably she would like Finbar best if he was still on the crew, yeah. um, oh. the champion eternal. Uh, yeah, oh, I have a title. It's so cool. <laughs> yeah, we need a title for uh for Mind Sliver too. It's a sword and he, uh, it's got a name now, uh, but it needs a title. What? Yeah, uh, I, I, I think all swords should have uh, names and titles. Um, yeah. uh, Redemption is the steel reclaimed. Mm -hmm. Wow. There's a couple other ones too. I can't remember what they are, but amusingly, um, this this is just giving me Michael Borcock vibes. Uh, between Eternal Champion, sorry, Champion uh, Eternal. Um, that's. I mean, yeah, I just stole it directly from Michael Borcock. <laughs> Stormbringer, the something something. Yeah. Well, yeah the no, demon exactly. holding itself very still and pretending to be a sword. It was, uh... Yes. Lalan I mean, I think that stuff is incredibly blade. dope. Yes, mm. Lalan was the waning blade. One of yes. my characters yeah. had um, companion, the blade ever bright. So, huh. 
Uh, whatever Malasibrius was before, it's now Malasibrius Scraper of Goo. So take that, Dexter. <laughs> Let's go. Or uh, Malediction. Malasibrius gets renamed. Malediction. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this. Yeah, this I, can't, I don't know if I gave Malediction a title. It might have just been like the Mage Killer or something like that. It's meant for killing wizards. Mm. Clyde. Cool. It's only ever kills. <laughs> well, it kills spells. Yeah. 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 Uh, we'll take I don't have the whole crew of the Ad Astra fleshed out now. Mm. Ancient history lost to time. But that would be so cool. We could do our own EXU calamity with it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty cool. Pretty tight. Pretty tight. Yeah. Um, uh, also from chat, has anyone asked how Cressida became the captain of the B crew yet? I would oh. imagine by default. <laughs> She's, That's just, she well, does seem like the most confident. <laughs> Um, no, well, of course, Davian himself is kind of, like, self-proclaimed captain, but I'm currently working on it. If you're a patron, you'll know that the first part of the story, the the B-team uh, fighting the Nautiloid in the Beastlands ha has already gone up. Um, I don't know when the next part's going to go up. Maybe next month, maybe the next one. I gotta finish the, uh, the Maxim Bat Origin story as well. Part three of that will be the last one. But, uh, there's a, there's not, there's, there's a bunch of things that happened on that ship, but that happened before... The main crew ended up in the Beastlands and saw them all fucked up. And events there led to Cressida being basically, like, kind of named the captain. And Ioni decided to be an adventurer and all that stuff. Hmm. So if you want to read that, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to go up on the Patreon. You can join uh, yeah, on the Patreon. Yeah, shameless plug for our Patreon. Stories. Um, we will continue to post the monthly rewards and everything, even in the time between campaigns. There's so much cool stuff that's going on there. And immediately after this live stream, we'll be jumping on Discord to do the monthly Patreon yes. hang. Ooh, so patrons, yes. Hey, yes. hang on. Um, More or less. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, we're in the last 10 minutes or so here. Um We've been trying to keep it mostly to campaign one questions since this is a campaign one wrap up. But if anyone does have campaign two questions, we're not going to give out too much info, but this is the time to sort of recap any info that we might have out there. Um, if, if you're interested, I think maybe we could run down the crew real quick um, to say to, we've announced before uh, our character classes for next campaign. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Does that include subclasses? It can if you want it to. Yeah, I think I some wanna. of you don't have subclasses. <laughs> some yeah. of us don't have so subclasses yet. We are, we are, uh, by the way, guys, this is, a, this is starting at third level. This is a low level yeah. campaign. We are so, such baby. <laughs> we are, we are so small. So some people don't even have subclasses yet because they've <laughs> multiclassed. But yeah, mm -hmm. Noir, tell us about well, your, your, uh, uh, I, your, your, your new friend. Yeah. My, my favorite, my favorite guy, my favorite little guy. They're, um, they're, they'll be a bard. I, I don't think that this is much of a surprise. Um, actually, well, I will do subclasses. Uh, they will be College of Creation. Ooh, wow, very cool. I answer. Oh, my uh, next. Are we saying should we should we say uh, the the species as well? The the, yeah, the ancestry, yeah, can, the race, can, depending whatever. Ancestry. Oh, oh, yeah. great! Oh, this will be fun. <laughs> well, the reason why they good. are a College of Creation is because they are a plasmoid. <laughs> Oh man, I'm so excited for your little guy. I cannot wait for this um, one. Yeah. What a goofball. What a goofball. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm keeping things chill with a, a halfling paladin. He's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, the funniest thing to me is that, like, my vision for him was like, like and like well into adulthood like not middle-aged but like by halfling standards you know several decades old but like the fact that he's third level means he's a very very slow learner <laughs> just like <laughs> not the not the highest achiever in his class you know very slow or steady um and uh the main thing about him I, I don't know how much detail we want to go into but i like the fact that there's canonically a, a population of halflings on like the third level of mount celestia and that's where he's from <laughs> um and mm. uh yeah, I, I think he's a lot of fun, and I'm going to have a good time playing him. Mm -hmm. Finally, I get to be Team Dad. Um, I am going to be playing a high elf bard rogue multi-class. So I am one of the aforementioned people who does not have a subclass yet, because level mm. three. I'll say it's one level in bard, two levels in rogue currently. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to uh, bring bring her into to the, the land of Sigil and um, decide on a bard subclass eventually, and... I have an idea for what kind of rogue subclasses I'm going to play, but really we're going to we're going to see how the campaign shakes out a little bit. Hell yeah. 
Um, and I will be playing a third level Feywander Ranger. I was going to see if I can do something cool with a multi class, but third level is three levels is not enough for me to do anything fun. Um, I feel like you're he... like four class ideas. You're like, it could be this I... and this, or this and that, or just could, this. but it's I, it's just going to be simpler <laughs> if I just do the Fey Wanderer Ranger. Um, and then he is going to be a Herringon. Yeah. Um, while he will be relatively short, I think his ears will be long so that I can hit the uh, six foot range that I do on most of my characters. Um, but yeah, yeah. But that's that's our our cast, and we're gonna have a lot more info about them coming in the next couple months uh, as we release character bios, little art, little you know, little previews of the voices and whatnot. Of course, cool things. So oh, I had to friendly. Google it. Friendly. I didn't realize you were going to be a bunny man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will oh, be a rabbit. boy. I'm really excited about this uh, particular cast of characters. I feel like there's some... There's just such a fun image of the, this quad walking around. Uh, in my <laughs> and I have a fun backup if you kill me, so... Oh, good. Um, and I bite. You're low level. You might, yeah. and I'm very mentor-coded. <laughs> I don't know. Red, did you have, a, have you picked a subclass yet? Because you, you, you do get it at third level, people are asking. I think I tend to default to Oath of Devotion, because uh, that tends to be the fairly like standard paladin, good and Indeed. light stuff. Uh, I don't have my notes on me, but I, I think that... Oh, wait, yes, I do. Hold on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what am I talking about? This is the device on which I have my character. Uh, yeah, Oath of Devotion Paladin. Um, I don't think I have a god specifically, because they don't make you do that in 5th edition. Um, Gotta be anyway, yep. Yeah. Um, and sort of related question without giving too much away, uh, do you think your campaign one character would get along with your campaign two character? Um, I don't <laughs> think Danny would get along with my campaign two character, but I think that that's the best possible outcome is that they just never have to interact. My bard would be the most insufferable plasmoid on the face <laughs> of the planescape. <laughs> Virla would not like them. <laughs> I do think Danny and your bard from campaign two would get along. I think so as well. <laughs> it could be it could be a thing where <laughs> Virla doesn't like uh the bard, Danny doesn't like the 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 bard rogue, but they like the other yeah. in the duo. And so <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Nor and I cool. are swapping brain cells. They're still just the same two that we've been ping ponging around, but now they're in a different brain. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh yeah. Uh I think Keanu would get along great with my campaign two character. I think, Hell yeah. uh, I, I think he would fill a, a, a somewhat lacking role of like <laughs> healthy mentorship in her life. Mm -hmm. Um, Finbar would be a little cautious of another, uh, Heron gone from the Feywild, but all, overall <laughs> they'd, they'd work through it. Um, uh, him and Voss will get together very well. Um, I'm up to my shenanigans, so it'll be fun. Go. Incredible. Um, and as in terms of like, do we have a specific start date for campaign two? It's going to be coming this summer, our usual release schedule. We haven't locked down the exact date in June or July, which Friday that will be, but more info on that will be coming. Uh, and we are going to stick to our usual upload schedule. So, you know, if you're, if you're worried, there's going to be a lot more downtime. Don't be, we got, we got a lot of cool stuff coming. And, uh, as we sort of wrap up this Q and a portion of the, <laughs> uh, rolling with difficulty wrap up, oh boy, that's a different podcast. Uh, <laughs> uh, just want to say, take a moment for us to be sentimental to you guys, the fans, uh, the listeners, the people who have been so kind as to join us, uh, ask all these questions, send them to the email. Um, thank you so much for listening along to campaign one. Uh, it's, it's been truly heartwarming to have such a, a kind, creative, uh, fascinating community from around this podcast. And I, I really hope that you continue to listen and enjoy and uh, adventure throughout the plains with us. We're, we're so excited to get to keep playing for you guys. And um, yeah, I can't wait to get join you guys in campaign two. Yeah. Yeah. A yeah. um, little bit of housekeeping. We are going to be doing some one shots in between campaigns as well. Uh, to sort of tease those a little bit. We've got one coming run by uh, our boy Wally and another run by our gal Red. So the two of the people go. who have not Game Mastered yet will be running one shots. Um, <laughs> two different systems that we haven't played on the podcast before. 
Uh, and yeah, just keep an eye out on your podcast feeds, your YouTubes, your socials for more announcements about when those will be coming out. But expect two more fun sessions for you guys. And uh, other than that, usual disclaimers. Uh, we got a Discord. We got a Patreon. We got a merch shop. Check out links to all of that. Uh, we, we hope that uh, if you... <laughs> <laughs> if you enjoyed talking to us, you might enjoy talking to other listeners. I highly recommend checking out the Discord for a lot of really great conversations. Um, thank you to everyone who has been supporting us on Patreon and who will be joining us in that hang uh, after this call. It's been... Uh, yes, we're going to continue over there. We're going to get so and much ramblier when we're on. We're going to be, be we're way more rambly. Yep. By the way, also, if you are interested, uh, we record those. So whether you want to like sign up and come listen to us now, or if you're like, oh, I can't make that, all of them mm -hmm. are archived. If you join, you get to listen to all the past ones, and you know the most recent one will be recorded and put up there. So. Mm -hmm. Great. And I don't know what fish means, but it's in the chat a bunch now. So I think that's our cue to end the live stream. <laughs> fish, uh, fish, fish, no, fish, no. fish, fish, fish. <laughs> Austin didn't make me fish in this campaign. That's the only real thing. <laughs> I really wanted to. Uh, I set up Davian as having just fished. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder I hated him on site. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, thank you guys for joining us in the Q&A. This audio will be going up uh, tomorrow. The VOD will be up right away. Um, catch all the patrons over on the Patreon hang, and everyone else will catch you in campaign two.